Good afternoon and welcome inside the Budweiser bullpen in downtown Amarillo, Texas as we end a journey that started all the way back in September as today is the regular season finale between the Amarillo Wranglers and the Colorado Grit. Hi everybody, Guy Carenza here today and it's going to be a fun one on tap as it is the rubber match of a three game set to close out the regular year. Amarillo won four to three on Friday in comeback fashion and yesterday it was Colorado coming away with a four to two victory, their first ever in regulation against these Wranglers and it ended a season long 10 game losing streak. So both teams are looking to end their regular seasons on a high note. For Colorado, their season's all but over the road ends here today as they've been eliminated from the Robertson Cup playoffs and tonight they're playing just for pride. But for the Wranglers, they have already punched their ticket to the Robertson Cup playoffs. They'll travel, they will travel to Albuquerque, New Mexico next weekend to take on the New Mexico Ice Wolves in a best of three series in the Robertson Cup play-in. So the Wranglers losers yesterday want to end their season on a high note heading into the first round of the Robertson Cup playoffs. Wranglers enter play with a record of 31, 26, and 2. They have 70 points on the season, and they're locked in at the fifth place position in the South Division. For Colorado, not the year that they would have wanted to have in their first season in the North American Hockey League, but they did get the win yesterday, improving their record to 12, 41, 4, and 2. They have 30 points on the season, and they are in the last place spot, ninth place in the South Division. This is game 60, the regular season finale. The rubber match with three games set and the 12th meeting between the Wranglers and the Grit this season. The Wranglers have a record of 9-1-0-1 against the Grit in the season series. But don't be fooled. While Amarillo has been dominant against Colorado this season, these last two games the Grit have proven that they're not going to end their first season in the league on a whimper. The Grit came to play on Friday. Wranglers were able to best them with a comeback victory with Ben Ivey getting the game winner in the final three minutes on the power play of Friday's game to make it 4-3 Wranglers. Yesterday it was Colorado winning 4-2 thanks to three first period goals, one from George Poirier, another from, from Graves, and the final one from Bowden to take a 3-0 lead after the first period and the Wranglers just couldn't recover. Noah Grolnick also had a goal and he ended up having a multi-point game to the tune of one goal and one assist. In the 11 games on the season series, watch out for him today. He's one of Colorado's best weapons. Jack Erickson stood tall in goal for Colorado, gave them a chance to win and a whole lot more. One of his best performances of the season earned him his 10th victory between the pipes for Colorado. As Erickson was phenomenal, stopping 35 of 37 shots in Colorado's 12th victory of the season. There were a few bright spots for the Wranglers despite the loss yesterday as the big man TJ Ritchie got his first goal in the North American Hockey League to make it a 3-1 game in the second period. Ritchie's been playing some of his best hockey down the stretch for the Wranglers. It's nice to see him get rewarded with his first goal in a Wrangler uniform. Roman Zapp picked up one goal and one assist in yesterday's contest, earning him his 15th multi-point game this season which is the team lead in that category. So watch out for number 89 tonight as he will be paired up on a line with Topi Puikinen and Connor McNaughton. Connor McDonough got the start last night making his 50th appearance on the season for the Wranglers. He's had a heavy workload and he stopped 23 of 26 shots yesterday. He'll get the day off as it'll be Andrew Peterson making his fifth appearance for the Wranglers this season. And so the play-in is set. The Wranglers know where they're going to be headed next weekend. Colorado, after this, they head home. The season is over. They regroup and get ready for next season. We've talked about it over the last couple of days, how there's still a lot of guys on this Colorado roster that have the potential to return next season. And they're playing with a lot of hunger, a lot of fight, and they're trying to prove to head coach Steve Haddon as to why they should earn that roster spot for next season. We've seen a lot of ferociousness out of Colorado in these last two games. They've looked very hungry, and quite frankly, they've been a thorn in the Wrangler's side as Amarillo would like to end the season with a victory on home ice before they take on New Mexico in the play-in. Now, one thing of note for Colorado, they are dressing only four defensemen here tonight, 16 skaters overall, because Jordan Goodridge is out with an injury, and Will Hadrick picked up a major penalty last night. He's suspended for the final game of the regular season. So for Colorado, uh, that defense is going to get tired very quickly, and the Wranglers need to take advantage of that, which takes us to our keys of the game, brought to you by Street Toyota. And the first one, 
course, has to be just get sustained offensive zone time, whether that's by dumping the puck in, creating chances off the rush. The Wranglers just need to find a way to wear out the Colorado defense. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some Colorado forwards kind of acting as fifth and sixth defensemen for Colorado this afternoon. Uh, speaking to the voice of the grit, Brendan Price, seems like we may see Braden Freifogel kind of slide down into that fifth defenseman role. But otherwise, that decor is wearing thin for Colorado. It's just Burke, Thompson, Cook, and Junker on the blue line for Colorado this afternoon. And so if you're the Wranglers, you have to take full advantage of that and wear their down with your speed and your size. Secondly, the Wranglers have to be better in the first period. That was kind of the low point for Amarillo in the last two games. Wranglers need to get off to a fast start. I think getting that first goal would help them a lot. I know we say that a lot this season, but the Wranglers need to play better in the first period, scoreless in the first period in their last two games. As Colorado on Friday and Saturday, uh, on Friday they took a 2-0 lead, jumped out to an early lead in the first three minutes of the game, and they picked up right where they left off yesterday, scoring the first three goals in the first period. The Wranglers can't let that happen again here today if they want a chance to win. And lastly, it's the final game of the regular season. Potentially the final game here at the Budweiser bullpen. And the Wranglers just need to have fun. Just play your game. Uh, it is for the love of the game after all. And so I think if the Wranglers just go out there, put their best foot forward, and just enjoy the game of hockey here this afternoon, I think they're going to be well equipped to come away with the victory here today. There's really not a lot of pressure here on the Wranglers here today as everything's kind of locked in. It's just a Sunday fun day here at the Budweiser bullpen trying to end the season on a high note and a victory on home ice. Let's get to our starting lineups. I'll start with the visiting Colorado group. We talked about how their decor has only four members here today. As they're starting forwards for Colorado, a jumbled bunch, as looks like you have two left wingers and one center starting the game, as it'll be number seven, Braden Freifogel, starting at left wing for Colorado. Freifogel weighs 175 pounds and stands at five foot 10. As he looks like today he will be playing in his final junior game as he's going to age out as he's at 20 years old. Freifogel on the season has five goals and 12 assists for 17 points in 57 games. Be Peyton Miller will also get the start for Colorado wearing number eight. Miller stands at six foot three, 201 pounds as a native of Flemington, New Jersey. Miller this season has five goals and seven assists for 12 points in 42 games. Looks like he's also playing in his final North American Hockey League game. And to the right, also making his final North American League appearance, number 29, Wilder DeCober. The native, the native of Carbondale, Colorado. Stands at five foot 10, 170 pounds. Picked up an assist last night in Colorado's 4-2 victory. As DeCober has 11 goals and 10 assists and 21 point, for 21 points in 58 games. On the blue line, it'll be number 15, Hunter Cook, the native of Highlands Ranch, Colorado, standing at six foot five, 220 pounds, paired up with number 26, Braden Junker. Junker stands at six foot one, 185 pounds, was acquired from the Janesville Jets earlier on in the season. In fact, the Wranglers actually saw Junker when he was a member of the Janesville Jets back at the NHL Showcase in Blame all the way back in September. Hard to believe that we've come a long way since September, and we're already here in the regular season finale. And goal for the third straight game is number one, Jack Erickson for Colorado. Erickson stands at six foot even, 185 pounds. Picked up his 10th victory of the season last night. As tonight will be his 38th appearance on the year. Erickson carries a record of 10, 22, and two. A 4.02 goals against average, an 879 save percentage, and one shutout on the season into the Grit's final matchup of the year. So that's the starting lineup for Colorado. Now let's get to your Amarillo Wranglers. As Austin Sutter is elected to send out the electric factory line of number 14, Magnus Godowski at left wing. Godowski stands at six foot three, 205 pounds, as was formerly with the Maryland Black Bears. Godowski picked up his first goal in a Wrangler uniform on Friday in the Wrangler 4-3 victory. He has five goals and four assists for nine points this season. Godowski's been an excellent pickup by the Wranglers, providing them with a lot of energy. 
And I like the way that Austin Sutter has put him on this line with number 11, Luke Morris, down the middle. As Morris gets the start at the center position, standing at 6 foot 1, 195 pounds. He's a right shot forward from Fredonia, New York. And Morris has been playing some of his best hockey down the stretch as he has two goals and two assists in his last five games against Colorado. He's also having a career year as well as he has 10 goals and eight assists for 18 points this season. And rounding out that starting forward line will be number 21, Morley Phillips, the grit killer. He stands at six foot two, six foot four, excuse me, 220 pounds as a right shot forward from Raleigh, North Carolina. Also a former member of the Maryland Black Bears. As Phillips this season has five goals and six assists. All five of his goals have come against Colorado. As Phillips in his last seven games has two goals and three assists. That's your starting forward line for the Wranglers. On the blue line, it'll be number three, Nick Troutwine, paired up with number 19, Nolan Gagnon. As Troutwine stands at six foot three, 210 pounds as a left shot defenseman from Eveleth, Minnesota. Today, Troutwine will be playing in his 35th game in a Wrangler uniform. He has one goal and eight assists since coming over in a trade from the Minnesota Wilderness. Gagnon has been a standout puck moving defenseman for the Wranglers this season as he leads the team with 33 assists in 57 games. Gagnon stands at 5'10", 170 pounds. He's a right shot defenseman from Metcalf, Canada. He's committed to play his NCAA Division I hockey at the University of Alaska Anchorage. And in goal tonight, it'll be number 33, Andrew Peterson, standing at 6'3", 201 pounds. The 18-year-old from Grand Forks, North Dakota is undefeated as he has a record of 3-0 on the season. He'll be making his fifth appearance between the pipes this afternoon. So I'm excited to see what the Wranglers can bring here in the final game of the regular season. Some other noteworthy changes. Cole Robertson re-enters the lineup as Jacob Miller comes out. Good to see Cole Robertson making his 13th appearance of the season. Robertson stands at 6 foot 3, 205 pounds as a left shot forward from Minnete Winnipeg, Manitoba. In fact, he's a legend up there with the Winnipeg Wild. He's one of their all-time leading point scorers. Looks like Sebastian Mitro also finds his way back into the lineup. Henry McRoberts comes out. Mitro will be making his 13th appearance of the season. As Mitro stands at 6 foot 2, 175 pounds. He's a left shot defenseman from Slovakia. Micho has been very impressive this season in his playing time. I'm excited to see what he can bring here this afternoon for the Wranglers as they look to pick up their 32nd victory of the season and advance to 72 points. This is year three of the Wranglers, and in every season, the Wranglers have improved upon their point total from the previous season. The Wranglers have a chance to do just that as they had 71 last year. Today with the victory, they put their mark at 72 and to be another record year for the Wranglers. As both teams have made their way back out to the ice to start the game. The Wranglers are led by head coach Austin Sutter. His assistant is Connor Yanni. Colorado is led by first year head coach Steve Haddon. And his assistant coach is Levi Weber. As we have ceremonial puck drop at center ice. I'll take a quick photo. It looks like they're presenting the player of the month award. Presented by 575 Pizzeria. We're having some fun on a Sunday afternoon. Player of the month in the month of March, to no surprise, is number six, Jack Ivey, having a career season. 31 goals, 19 assists, 50 points in 57 games. Is now Ben Ivey. Goes out to face off against Peyton Miller for the ceremonial puck drop. The Ivey Twins have committed to go play at Army West Point for their NCAA Division I hockey. This looks like we've got the puck drop out of the way. Coming up next is the National Anthem. And when we return on the Wranglers Hockey Network, first period action from the bullpen. This is the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube.
Roll up that red carpet because we are all set and ready to go in the final regular season game of the 2023-2024 season. As the Amarillo Wranglers host the Colorado Grit on a Sunday afternoon in the Texas Panhandle. The Wranglers will skate from right to left wearing their blue jerseys. Colorado from left to right wearing their whites. As the boys in blue look to pick up one final win and in the regular season on a high note. Andrew Peter Peterson gets the start between the pipes, looking to pick up his fourth win of the season. Peterson previously stopped 26 out of 30 shots in the 8-4 victory against Colorado on March 16th. For Jack Erickson, for Jack Erickson, we saw him yesterday as he earned the 4-2 victory for Colorado, stopping 35 of 37. The only thing at stake here today is ending the season with one last victory for Colorado. The summer awaits for the Wranglers. Next weekend, they head to Albuquerque. As we're underway, as the puck is dropped, Wranglers win the opening draw. Nick Troutwine off the end boards. Nolan Gagnon will play it forward, and the Wranglers look to get started on offense. We'll have to wait for that, though, as just 12 seconds in, Amarillo has iced the puck. So this draw is going to come all the way back down into Wrangler territory. And they're having some fun on a Sunday afternoon. Happy to have you with us here today on the Wranglers Hockey Network. Wherever you are, hope you're having a good time. Having some snacks here this afternoon. Maybe a nice meal and a beverage of your choice. Sit back and enjoy some Sunday hockey with us. So the draw is on the far circle to the right of Peterson. Morris will take it against Peyton Miller. Morris wins the draw, cleanly to Gagnon. He'll whack it all the way out to the neutral zone where it trickles to Braden Junker. And he'll force it down to Peterson, who's out of his crease to play the puck. Turnover here in the near corner. Centering pass is broken up by Luke Morris, and that spurs the Wranglers into action. As on the left wing, it's Nolan Gagnon going all the way to the corner. Meanwhile, Freifogel lost an edge, went tumbling into his own net, and so we get the game's second stoppage, 33 seconds into the period. To put that net back on. So Colorado making a line change. The Wranglers do as well as on comes the top line of Ben Ivey, Jack Ivey, and Jack McDonald. The two blue liners right now are Martins Kruklidis, the Latvian, and Kyle DeMarco, longtime Wranglers defenseman playing in his 176th North American League game as a shot from the right wing is snagged by Erickson for another stoppage with 19.23 to go in the first period. So some whistles here to begin Action on a Sunday. As the draw is to the left of Erickson on the far circle of the Wrangler, or of the grit zone, excuse me. That's what happens when you get jumbled up on a Sunday. Final game of a three game set. DeMarco winds it in around towards the near side half wall. Left side shot from Ben Ivey. Another glove save is made by Erickson. And again, we get another whistle with 19 12 to go in the first. If I'm not mistaken, that's four whistles in the opening first minute of the game. Let's see if we can sneak in another one in the final 12 seconds. Draw in the near circle. Ben Ivey against Lucas Mann. Off the draw, Ben tries to sneak it towards the goal and it trickles towards Erickson and there you go. Our fifth stoppage of the game, 50 seconds in. And so we'll do it again. But I like that look there from the Wranglers captain. Kind of trying to just muscle his way towards the goal. Looks like Jack McDonald who we saw take some faceoffs yesterday We'll take it here and win it. He gets it to Ben Ivey, centering feed. Jack Ivey was there, but Christian Carter had lift him stick at the last second. As Lucas Mann shovels it towards the near side. Errant pass goes to Jack McDonald, and he gets upended as he gets hit up high. His helmet pops off, and the Wranglers taking offense as Jack Ivey getting in the fray to stand up for his teammate. That draws a whistle a minute and seven seconds into the contest. Looks like Jack McDonald took a shoulder up high, ends up popping off his bucket. And that's going to warrant the first penalty of the game is going to the box. Is Braden Freifogel. And so the first power play of the game belongs to the Wranglers.
And so the league's third best power play will get to work. 22.3%. They went 0 for 3 yesterday. Colorado penalty kill operates at 80.2%. That's 21st best in the league. Although they have come around as of late. As looks like Jack Ivey's in the box as well. So he gets a two minute double minor. So actually it looks like Colorado is going to the power play as they have added some penalties towards the board. Jack Ivey gets a double minor. McDonald in the box as well. That offsets the Freifogel penalty. And so Colorado actually is the first power play of the game. And so they'll move it D to D on the line to the left wing. Grolnick steps in and shoots. Peterson makes a save his first of the afternoon. As the Wranglers from their end will launch it back down towards Erickson and get a clear and a partial change. So Jack Ivan in the box, double minor for Ruffing. And then the penalties to Freifogel and McDonald. Make it two minutes to Jack in the box. Jack Ivy, that is. You got a couple Jacks in the box. In the neutral zone, Grolnick. We'll backhand it down towards Peterson. He comes out of his crease to play it behind the net. The North Dakota native will slide it towards McNaughton on the far wall. And now Ben Ivey will skate it to center circle. As he gets poked off the puck by Bowen Burke. Burke enters, center point shot. Save made by the glove of Peterson. That leaves just one minute of power play time remaining for the grit. As Peterson gets the whistle with 17.53 remaining in the first. Draw will be two Petersons left on the near circle. Oh, the Wranglers zone, Amarillo victorious at the circle. Morris with it, pumps it towards Ben Ivey and he will whack it up into the rafters on the clearing attempt. Might be the first time we've seen that this season. I can't recall a moment where the puck actually ended up in the rafters. We had some times where they came close from, if my memory serves correctly, that is the first time they've had to, ha to have a stoppage of play because the puck got tangled up in the rafters. So Luke Morris, the face-off circle in front of his own bench, sees Colorado win the draw. Man on the man advantage. Jimmy's down the left wing wall towards the far corner. Behind the net, Luke Morris looks to strip the puck away. Successful in doing so, and Kuklidis will blast it out to center ice, unable to hold it in, was Braden Junker. Peyton Miller will re-enter on the right wing, looks to dangle around Kruklidis, but another good play by the Latvian. Sends Colorado to retreat back into their own end. With 15 seconds and counting remaining on Colorado's power play. Colorado's offside on their most recent attempt. Get another stoppage with 17.01 to go in the first. Eight seconds remaining on the Colorado power play. Well, this game just seems to have no flow right now. And there's a lot of whistles to open this game. Five shots on the board, three for the Wranglers, two for the grip. As Merrick Thompson cycles through the neutral zone, enters on the left wing. His shot goes up and over the glove of Peterson and goes to the right point. Back to even strength as the Wranglers have gone one for one on the penalty kill. Although Jack Ivey is still in the box with Freifogel for the next two minutes. As Gerhard down the middle, finds a man at the right circle and Robertson will go around the net. Backhand pass towards the middle, broken up by Colorado. Buck is swept over to Bowen Burke. And he's able to get it to the blue line and out the center. We get a stoppage with 16.80 to go in the first. It looks like the puck had leaped into the Wranglers bench. A lot of whistles to begin this one. Landon West will take the draw against Connor McNaughton. McNaughton out there with Weekenden and Zap. As the Wranglers are victorious on the faceoff. Sebastian Mitro. No longer sporting the cage. He's 18 now. He's now wearing the visor. As he plays it forward, McNaughton has it on the left wing. He stops at the half wall, looks for support. Gets wedged up against the boards, and it looks like behind the play, 
and that had come off for the second time today. So another whistle, four minutes and one second into the first period. Draw will be on the near circle. McNaughton in that line staying out there. This time his opponent at the dot is George Poirier. Semenyuk and Mitro, the two D-men. As McNaughton wins the draw, Zap cycles around the net, pops out on the far side, turns and shoots, and a quick glove shave, saved by Erickson. Keeps it a scoreless game. There's a good shift there for that trio. Looks like they're going to stay out there. As McNaughton now on the far circle will duel against Mann. This time Colorado wins the draw. Cook will propel it out towards the neutral zone. It's gloved down by Semenyuk. Wranglers backhand it back down behind Erickson. It'll be fielded by Junker. And he'll pop the puck back out to center where it's scooped up by Freifogel. Quick shot goes off the leg of Mitro. Nice defensive play there from the youngster. As man gets it back on the near side. Up to the line, Thompson has it, snaps it towards the goal. And it goes wide of Peterson. Freifogel collects the rebound, darts it to Mann in the near corner. All alone in the right circle, Freifogel a shot. Peterson is ready for it, and he makes the stop with 15-15 to go in the first period. Peterson makes his third save of the game. Looks like he's sharp to begin the contest. As the next draw will be to his left on the near circle of the Wrangler zone. Morris will take it against Lucas Mann. Mann has been actually pretty impressive for Colorado down the stretch as he's playing in his 10th game. One goal and two assists as Peterson makes the save on a shot from the near side. Now Puck goes behind the Wrangler netminder towards the far corner. DeMarco connects with Phillips. And he springs Gadowski into motion. Forward pass on the tape of Luke Morris. Looks to drop it off for Gadowski, but the pass was behind him. And now Colorado sprints down the right wing as Carter, a backhand try, is stopped by Peterson. Looks like Andrew Peterson has brought his A game here today. Undefeated this season with a record of 3-0. Looks to pick up win number four in his young career today. Draw in the near circle. Graves will take it against Ben Ivey. The Wrangler's top line comes back out. Ben wins the draw. Troutwine will jar it towards Jack McDonald. He finds Ben Ivey moving through the neutral zone. Now right wing, it's Jack Ivey towards the middle. And it goes wide of the goal. Looks like he was looking for a tip in. Long shot by Troutwine. Pad save, Erickson. Puck is loose. Jack Ivey trying to stash it in. And Colorado is able to come up with a defensive stop. Now spinning on the right wing is Miller. He'll drive towards the net. Save made by Peterson in close quarters. And the Wranglers get the loose puck. Potential three on two. Puck bumbling and bouncing through the neutral zone. It's grasped by Jack McDonald. He'll enter on the right wing and then just stuff it down and head towards the bench for a line change. Jack Ivey stays out on the four check, making life difficult for Hunter Cook. Grayson Gerhardt helping out as well, but looks like Colorado has a grasp on the puck for the moment. 14 minutes left to go in the first period. Wranglers regroup and reload at center. As Jack Ivey will blast it in harshly off the end boards. Colorado responds by jolting it back out towards the neutral zone. This time it's TJ Ritchie whipping it all the way around from point to point as the puck mo puck's momentum carries it back to Cole Semenyuk. Elias Abrant pivots, finds a trailer on the left wing in Gerhard. He gets boxed up against the near side half wall. Colorado trying to slip the puck free, and they do. As Bowen Burke will sky it into the rafters. So go figure, you don't see any of those plays all season long. And now here in the first period, you see two. Looks like it's just gonna be one of those days. Another whistle with 13.23 to go in the first period. Face off is going to stay in the Colorado zone on the near circle to the right of Erickson. McNaughton taking the draw. For Amarillo, Colorado stands firm as Jacober wins the faceoff. Wranglers get possession back as they flutter it behind Erickson. Puikin and Nodal High. The right point, Semenyuk. Dancing, he'll shovel it down behind the goal. Colorado helps it out towards the right wing. 
He'll get it out for Duncan, Duncan Shin. He'll go around the net on his backhand, battling against Semenyuk. Wrangler's defender stands tall. Amarillo gets the puck back. As Pawikinen will backhand it towards the goal. Erickson will scoop it up with his glove. And stop time with 12.52 to go in the first period. Still a scoreless game here at the Budweiser bullpen. Wranglers lead the shot count 6-5. Make that 7-5 as they just added one on the board. Been a pretty slow moving game so far in contrast to the high flying games that we had on Friday and Saturday. At the left point, Kuklidis keeps the puck in. Phillips looks, looking for Morris on the left wing. He's got him in the near corner. Tries to center it to Phillips. Bouncing puck in close quarters. Kadowski back end try. Save made by Erickson. Second try. And Jack Erickson stands tall again. Now Morris off the post. Wranglers keep the puck in. He's at the left point. Kuklidis finds Morris at the half wall. Here's Phillips. Left circle. He'll shoot. And it goes off a leg and out of play. And so while the game had been pretty quiet in terms of grade A scoring chances, we get the best chance there. First it's Magnus Godowski all alone in close quarters. The puck just rolled off of his stick. Did end up getting a forehand try. Erickson shut the door. And then in the slot, it was Luke Morris pounding the puck off the post. That line will stay out there as Morris will take the draw against Lucas Mann on the near circle. Wranglers victorious on the draw. They'll paddle it towards the near corner. Gadowski driving towards the net. Backhand try. Goes over the goal and towards the far corner. Colorado is able to jam it free and slip the puck back out the center ice where Kuklidis will deliver it back in. Colorado settles the puck down as on the near wing. Colorado gets to work. Right point, Freifogel down low for man. Centering feed, pad saved by Peterson on Christian Carter, and the Wranglers get possession and roll out the center ice. Peterson's had to make some big saves here so far in the game. Look at the shot count right now, 12 to six in favor of the Wranglers. And take up a let's go Wranglers chant as Ben Ivey twists it to Jack McDonald. He'll enter on the far wing. Gets boxed out by two grit defenders. Wranglers keep the puck for a moment. Is at the right point, Gagnon. Finds Jack Ivey at the line. Now Troutwine from the left wing. Takes the shot. Erickson, the pad save. Man to the middle. He's got Graves. Long dumping. Goes off the corner towards the middle. Picks up his own rebound. And Peterson stands tall and makes the save. Well, Colorado learned that if you fire a shot off of one of the corners, there's a good chance it's going to ricochet into the slot. It's a high IQ play there from Colorado, but Andrew Peterson, an even smarter one, as he's ready to make the save with 11 minutes left in the first. It's a scoreless affair here at the Budweiser bullpen, and we're just getting started. We'll be back in just a moment on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube. Welcome back to downtown Amarillo. Defensive zone draws won by the Wranglers, but Colorado has the puck. It's behind the net. It will cycle towards the far side wall. Graves down low for Miller. He's jockeying against Troutwine. Centering feed. Rue is there from a sharp angle, and Peterson shuts it down. Now Jack Ivey rumbles down the right wing. Paddles it down off the end boards. As Colorado gets a grasp on the puck, as Rue will find Graves at center. Approaching the midway point of the first period. Scoreless game, but the Wranglers lead the shot count 
13 to eight as Jack Erickson scoops up a long shot from the blue line. Colorado got the first goal on Friday and Saturday. Wranglers looking to change that narrative here today by getting the first one. Gerhard out there with Robertson and Abrant. The draw is one, puck escapes Sebastian Mitro. will regather it at center ice. As the Wranglers knock it back down behind Erickson. Abrant in pursuit of the puck. Pins up Burke in the near corner of the Colorado zone. Gerhard slips it free towards the goal and Robertson was there. We get a stoppage with 10.05 to go in the first period. Cole Robertson was camped out in front of Erickson. Trying to see if he could redirect the puck in. Looks like the net had come off again for the third time this game. That's why we have the stoppage and so again a near side draw. Gerhard against Graves. Gerhard wins it again cleanly and it splits the D. Semenyuk will regather it deep in his own end. Robertson will direct the puck down behind Erickson. Bouncing puck turned over in the high slot. Wrangler swatting at it trying to get it. But Colorado is able to burst into the Wrangler end. It's down the middle of Shakober. Wranglers are able to muscle him away from the puck. Puck is hopping between the Wrangler's circle. Semenyuk able to safely gather it and move out of his own end. Seems like the puck is playing tricks on both sides here today. As by looks of the ice, you can kind of tell that it's been warm outside. Ice isn't looking its greatest. Therefore, you have a very jumpy puck. Through the neutral zone is Quinn Bowden, who had a goal in last night's game. Wranglers respond by sending it down into the Colorado end, no icing. As Grolnick will gather it at center ice. Move it to Poirier, his long shot is directed wide. Second attempt by Grolnick, goes off the side of the net to Kyle DeMarco. He gets tripped up, that'll raise the arm. Colorado will touch up and the Wranglers will head to the power play. George Poirier is the culprit. So a good chance for the Wranglers to get the first goal of the game. Tripping is the call. And so now the league's third best power play will get to work. 22.3% on this season. They've been dominant against Colorado. The Grit have the 21st best penalty kill in the league, 82.3%. 80.2%, excuse me. They have come alive as of late as they went three for three against the Wranglers yesterday. Draw in the nearest circle, Wranglers get possession as Ben Ivey has it at the half wall. Finds McDonald, left wing, he'll go around the net. Shifts towards his backhand to his forehand. He goes up top for Jack Ivey. Now at the line, it's Gagnon. Drifting towards his left. Throws it across to his right, and the pass is intercepted by Burke. He'll skate down the left wing, take a shot, and a glove save is made by Peterson. A good idea there from Nolan Gagnon, but Burke was kind of cheating up a little bit. Anticipated the play, was able to make the interception. And move down the left wing for a scoring chance shorthanded for Colorado. Luckily, Gagnon was able to get back in good enough position to kind of keep the shot from the outside, making an easy save for Peterson. Draws one by Colorado. Cook at center ice. We'll just fling it back down behind Peterson and the Wranglers will start their next breakout with 30 seconds gone off the power play. Jack Ivey on the right wing. Glides down the wall. Gets taken down in the corner. McDonald keeps the puck in the Wranglers' grasp. He's now on the near corner at Zap. We'll move it towards the far side for Jack Ivey. Atop it's Ben Ivey. Right circle for Jack Ivey, he'll shoot. And a nice offensive stick by Hunter Cook sends the puck out of play with 7.50 to go in the first and 109 remaining on the penalty to Poirier. <coughs> D 
draw on the far circle. McNaughton to take it against Christian Carter. Wranglers out there are Puikinen, McNaughton, Morris, DeMarco, and Troutwine. As they look to get the game's first goal. Wranglers win the face off. Right circle, McNaughton to the left point for DeMarco. Wranglers move it from high to low. Is now in close quarters. McNaughton backhand try. Stopped by Erickson. Morris has it now on the near wing. Up to the line for DeMarco. Looks to return it to Morris, but Colorado sniffs it out and gets a clear. With just around 40 seconds remaining on the Wrangler power play. And the Grit are going to take this opportunity to get a line change as DeMarco starts the next Wrangler's charge. Morris centers it for McNaughton. Wranglers are offside with 7.10 to go in the first. So while we've seen a lot of shots in the first period, 24 combined, 14 for the Wranglers, 10 for the Grit. Most of them have just been shots from the outside, not a lot of high quality chances. I think the best chance of the night so far was the Godowski chance, followed up by Morris's shot between the circles. But other than that, not a whole lot going on offensively in this game. It's the Wranglers enter on the left wing. It's Nick Troutwine in the waning moments of the power play. will swoop behind the net, pop out on the far side, and Colorado gets a stick on it. They'll tumble it back down to the Wranglers end, and the Grit get the kill. We're back to even strength. Cole Robertson rumbles down the right wing. Looks to go around Thompson. Robertson is directed towards the far corner. Plays it from low to high to Semenyuk. He'll weasel his way down the wall. Looks to center it. And it goes off the stick of Graves and out of play for a stoppage with 6.23 remaining in the first period. Twelfth and final meeting of the season between these two clubs. Wranglers are 9-1, 0-1 against Colorado, but the Grit have proven to be pesky this weekend. Putting up a good fight on Friday and Saturday. Looks like they're not backing down here today either. As Colorado wins the defensive zone draw. Wranglers doing a good job on the forecheck to keep the puck in the zone. And as Abrant looks to gather it in the near corner. Wall and out to the red line. Six minutes to go in the first period. Still a scoreless game at the Budweiser bullpen. Abrant on the forecheck gets a steal. Gerhard at the top of the blue paint. And the Wranglers just couldn't get the shot off. Colorado comes away unscathed. That was a great play by Elias Abrant to set up Gerhard. Just kind of in an awkward position and couldn't get the shot off. Now Gerhard gets taken down on the near wing. You've got Hunter Cook pinning him down to the ground. Linesman just watching there as the puck is peeled away by Colorado. And on the far wing, Godowski shovels it down beneath the Colorado goal line. Boomerangs back to Godowski. He'll wrap it down to the inboards for Phillips, and he takes an awkward hit from Hunter Cook. Phillips back up on his feet. Now behind the play, Luke Morris taking offense to the hit that Cook threw on Phillips, and rightfully so. Now we get a whistle with 5.07 to go in the first. Door to the visitors' penalty box is open. And in will go Hunter Cook. Unfortunately for Amarillo, Luke Morris is also going to go as well. And so it looks like we're going to have some four on four time. Each man gets two minutes for roughing. All that coming with 5.07 to go in the first period, so some open space here in the final quarter of the first. Neutral zone draw is won by Colorado. Grolnick will slide it over to George Poirier. Colorado with three forwards and one D-man. Wranglers with two forwards and two defensemen. As DeMarco gets pinned up with Thompson on the far wall, Kruklidis will free the puck, the puck, excuse me, from the pileup. 
And now DeMarco will wait behind his own net to see an avenue to roll out. With 125 remaining on the four on four. He'll move it towards his right for Kuklidis. He's looking for Zap up ahead. It escaped the German forward. And will roll directly in on Eriksson, who freezes with 4.22 to go in the first period. Ringlers get a line change. Still two forwards and two demon as Ben Ivey out there with Jack McDonald, Gagnon, and Troutwine. Draw in the near circle. Ben Ivey against Freifogel. Ben wins it. Jack McDonald looks to move it to the right point for Gagnon. Defensive stick gets in the way, but McDonald keeps a hand on the puck. Nick Troutwine. I'll leave it for Ben Ivey. Wranglers taking their time. As Gagnon charges down the left wing, knifes his way towards the middle, but the puck just wouldn't settle down, and the grit were able to knock it into the Wrangler end as Bowen Burke moves up to the right point, throws it across for Poirier. Now Lucas Mann with it. Over to the left point for Burke. He'll shoot, deflection out in front, and it goes wide of Peterson. Jacober was there between the circles. And here's Jacober again behind the net. Wrap around try. Peterson shuts it down. Puck is loose. They're charring for it. And Ben Ivey is able to skate it free. The captain gets it out of harm's way with 20 seconds remaining on the four on four. Now Merrick Thompson will start from his own end. With 3.17 to go in the first period. Peyton Miller over the red line. Toe drag goes around Jack Ivey. As he's between the circles, takes a shot, it's blocked. On the rebound, Gronick finds Thompson, right circle towards the middle, Gronick turning and shooting! And it goes off a stick and stays in play. Sebastian Mitro will claim the free puck and guide it towards the neutral zone. As Wranglers try and plug it back into the Colorado end. Chris Graves directs it towards his right. Sheldon Rue, one touch pass for Miller. Centering feed off the stick of Graves. Wranglers will handle it as Jack Ivey starts the next breakout. On the right wing, he shoots. Blocker save, Erickson. Puck goes off a leg and towards the near side where Peyton Miller will skate through the neutral zone and backhand it down towards Peterson. Off of his stick, and now the grip move in transition. Left wing, it's Sheldon Rue. High shot up into the netting. Stops time with 2.13 to go in the first period. Draw on the far circle. The Gerhard line back out there as Grayson will take the draw against Wilder Jacober. You get a false start on the draw. We'll do it again. This line has looked pretty good for the Wranglers so far this afternoon. Gerhard with Robertson and Abrant. As Colorado off the draw, right point shot. Never saw Peterson as it was fired into traffic. Wranglers are able to jar it to the neutral zone. Colorado re-enters on the left wing. Bowden to the middle. Pass was behind Jacober. Wranglers have the puck. As on the left wing, it's Abrant. Dump and chase action. He's doing it all on his own. Now Gerhardt steps in for support. In the near corner, racing Gerhardt getting bodied up against the half wall now. Is able to kick it back towards the corner for Abrant. He gets dragged down looking for a penalty. He's not going to get one. As Bowden with the puck now, sees Robertson closing in on him. He's able to jar it back down towards the Wrangler end. Kuklidis, the first man there. Colorado, second man gets it. It's Duncan Shin. They try and force it towards the slot. Wranglers are able to sniff it out. Now here's developing a two-on-one. His left wing, Gerhard shoots, and it goes wide of Erickson. A little over a minute remaining in the first period as Christian Carter... Rumbles over the Wranglers' attacking line as left wing. Carter pivots in the far corner. He'll wrap the puck around towards the near half wall, looking for Braden Freifogel. Lucas Mann steps in. Mann with it behind the net. On his forehand, centering feed, jumps over the stick of Freifogel. Kept in at the right point. Centering feed off the skate of DeMarco. Morris has it. Under a minute to go in the first period. Wranglers trying to get a goal here as Phillips, sharp angle shot, pad saved by Erickson. And now we have an arm raised with 36.7 seconds to go in the first. Whistle is blown. We're going to get another penalty. 
Looks like it's going to be a cross check and they're guiding Luke Morris towards the home penalty box. Looks like he's going to sit in Colorado. We'll go to the power play. So draw on the far circle of the Wranglers zone. Ben Ivey will take it against Landon West. Draw is won by the grit. At the left point, Thompson feeds it towards the right for Burke. He'll gain this circle. Now stop and try and drift back up to the point. An offensive stick by Jack. Ivey tops it down towards Erickson. It's a race for the puck and Erickson gets there first. Jack Ivey was lurking shorthanded. He's able to force Colorado to regroup in the late stages of the first. As Merrick Thompson directs it towards his right, pass was too far ahead of Burke. Jack Ivey has it at the red line. We'll get one final clear. As time is going to wind down here in the first period at the Budweiser bullpen. And so, after 20 minutes of play, it's still a scoreless affair. Colorado will open the second period of play with 124 of power play time to work with. As for us, we are headed to the first intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages where we, where we will recap all the events of the first period. Look ahead to period number two. Maybe talk a little shop about the upcoming matchup against the Ice Wolves next weekend as is the, it is the final game of the regular season. Game 60 of the 2023-2024 regular season. So we'll have that and a whole lot more when we come back on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube.
Welcome back to the Budweiser bullpen for the first intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages. As after one period to play, it's a scoreless affair. Wranglers nothing, grit nothing, although Colorado will start the second period of play with a minute and 24 seconds of power play time to work with. Really a, a pretty uneventful first period. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of quality scoring chances, and I would say that uh, the few ones that were present in the first period were more in favor of the Wranglers than the grip. Amarillo does outshoot Colorado 16-10 to through one period of play. So the Wranglers have done a good job of getting shots on goal. Uh, but I just think that a lot of them have been from the outside. Pretty easy saves for Erickson, whether it's with his glove or his pad. Um, so I think in the, in the second period of play and on, I think the Wranglers are going to be looking for some more higher quality chances, although there were a few good moments. Uh, first one with the chance for Godowski, where Wranglers centered the puck. Godowski's in close quarters with Erickson. Uh, tries to take a backhand shot. Puck kind of rolls off of his stick. Uh, doesn't get the shot off initially, and then he turns towards his forehand, is able to fire it towards the goal where Erickson makes the save, and the rebound ends up between the circles where Luke Morris pounds the shot off the post that ultimately, at this point, could have made it a one nothing game. Instead, we're still scoreless through 20 minutes of play. There was another chance where Grayson Gerhardt kind of had a similar chance to what Godowski had where he was kind of stationed out at the top of the blue paint. Uh, the puck was kind of thrown into his skates. He tries to turn and just get a shot off, whether it's with his forehand or his backhand. But he's kind of in an awkward position with the fence closing in on him. Erickson's there as well. Can't get the shot off, and Colorado's able to clear. Um, so I do I do think that the Wranglers have gotten some good chances in the first period. you got to think if it isn't just a game of inches, and Morris's shot is a little more to his left, or to the left, and then we're talking about a one nothing Wrangler lead instead of a scoreless first period. It's kind of just how it works sometimes as there were a good amount of penalties in the first period. Neither team was able to capitalize on any of them though. As with one of these Sunday games, it's hard to really tell what you're going to get. It is the rubber match of a three game set, final game of the regular season. Neither team really has a whole lot of uh, stake on the line other than the fact that it is the final game of the regular season you want to end it on a high note and certainly for the Wranglers knowing that you're going to be going to Albuquerque next weekend to face the Ice Wolves in the play-in you're going to want to uh, kind of be in tip-top shape ready for the play-in because at that point you have to start winning some games at the best of three series there's not a lot of margin for error there and so for, if you're the Wranglers you want to be red hot and ready to go for Friday night in New Mexico. As both teams were, went 100% on the penalty kill in the first period, as Colorado went one for one on the penalty kill, and the Wranglers so far are two for two. And look to make that three for three here at the start of the second period. So that's kind of been the tail of the tape so far. And we do have a lot of clarity on the play-in series against New Mexico. Dates and times have been set, and it is as follows. As the Ice Wolves will be the host, game one is set for Friday, April 12th, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, 6.30 uh, in the local time, which is the mountain time zone in Al Albuquerque. Game two, same time on Saturday, 7.30 Central. And then game three, if necessary, is set for Sunday afternoon, uh, one week from now, on the 14th of April, at 3 o'clock Central. And so for the Wranglers, are hoping that you can win the first two games and not have to play that Game 3. Um, but if we do have to get to Game 3, then that is what it will be. So another afternoon game. And some of these games are, are tough, these afternoon games. Uh, especially here at the end of the season. Uh, you know, you're, you're feeling some ailments. you got, <laughs> you got 60 games worth uh, on your shoulders this season. And... Uh, it's kind of tough to play a game, a second game, in less than 24 hours as the Wranglers wrapped up yesterday's night's affair. Had to get right back up today and play an afternoon game. So it is tough to kind of get up for that. And I think we're kind of seeing that in the first period as it's kind of just that feeling out process that first period where both teams are kind of just like, well, like, <laughs> I guess we're playing today. Like, we quick turnaround. Like, we got to get up and go. But like I said it before, I do think that the Wranglers had uh, more quality chances than Colorado did. 
Andrew Peterson looks sharp in goal. He's able to make some big saves when needed as Colorado did have some good quality chances, but Peterson was able to make some big stops to keep it a scoreless game as he's making his fifth appearance of this season. And I've been really impressed with what Andrew Peterson has been able to do uh, in his short time as a Wrangler, in his young career. Uh, I think that he's going to be a good one for the Wranglers to come as he gets the start here this afternoon. He, so far, he's stopped all 10 shots that he's seen. Erickson has gone 16 for 16. So that's kind of been the lowdown of the first period of play. No scoring. Look to see that in the second period. And when we come back on the Wranglers Hockey Network, we'll talk about what the Wranglers need to do to get on the board in the second period and get things rolling offensively. Get the game's first goal against Colorado, who scored first on Friday and Saturday. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube. Welcome back to the Texas Panhandle inside the Budweiser bullpen for the first intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages. I'm Guy Carenza. The score is still scoreless as we're having some fun on a Sunday afternoon on the final game of the regular season. The NHL showcase in Blaine. As that's where it all started for the Wranglers. They were one of the few teams that didn't play on the weekend before the showcase. They didn't play the weekend afterwards. And so that was it. That was the first week of the regular season for the Wranglers. They took on the Janesville Jets. Won 2-1 to in overtime. And it's been a fun ride ever since. And it's not going to end today. As for Colorado, their season's over. Once the buzzer founds for the final horn here today for the Wranglers, they still got more to do. As they'll be in Albuquerque next weekend taking on the New Mexico Ice Wolves. As here today, fans enjoying a Sunday fun day. Neither team really has anything at stake other than just winning today and ending the season on a high note. And for the Wranglers, again, you want to get that momentum going into New Mexico. I don't really think the pace of the first period helped them in, in that regard as I think the positive is that so far they haven't surrendered the first goal of the game, something that they did 
on Friday and Saturday. They kind of slowed Colorado a little bit in the first period. Colorado really wasn't as jumpy off the gun as they were on Friday and Saturday. And so for the Wranglers, looks like they've kind of turned the page in that and put together a decent first period. And in the pregame, we talked about how the Wranglers needed to be better in the first period. I think put 16 shots on goal and keep your opponent off the board. I mean, you'd like to score, probably could have scored uh, if Luke Morris' shot is a little more uh, shot towards the left, but sometimes it's just a game of inches. All in all, it wasn't, <coughs> excuse me, it wasn't a bad first period for the Wranglers. I think there's stuff to improve upon in the second period, but we've seen them do that from time to time this season. We've coined it the second period surge, and here in the final day of the season, let's take a look and see. As the numbers are in, Wranglers in the regular season scored 36 goals in the first period. In the second period, they've scored 62, and in the third, 66. So for the Wranglers, they're really poised to break out in period two and period three. Now, we saw the Wranglers score in the second period yesterday, and the Wranglers in the second period have scored a goal in each of their last eight games, dating all the way back to March 9th at Shreveport what was a 4-2 to two Wrangler loss. So the Wranglers have done a good job of scoring in the second period. Watch out for that here today. As it seems like as time continues to work its way towards the end of the affair, it seems like it could be a low scoring game here today. And it seems like that first goal of the game could be a big one. As the Wranglers went tied after one or 13-5-4-1. Colorado went tied after one, 1-17-1-2. One one so it seems like this outcome so far has been in favor of the Wranglers, and if they do what they've done do all season long, it should be poised for that second period breakout. We should see some goals here in the second period. Both goalies were stellar in the first period. Jack Erickson stopped 16 of 16. Andrew Peterson, 10 of 10. And the Wranglers will look to stay perfect on the penalty kill as Colorado will open the second period with 124 of power play time to work with as Luke Morris will finish the tail end of his sentence for cross-checking. That came with 36 seconds left in the first period. As both teams are back out there for second period action, it is the period of the long change. You have noticed that the ice is a little bit, a uh, little wonky today. It's late in the season. It's been hot outside. Buck seems to have ideas of its own. It's jumping and bumping and everything else. But the Wranglers kind of just settle things down a bit. Stay calm, stay cool. Just play your game, play some Wranglers hockey. Not to sound like a cliche machine or anything, but sometimes that's just how it is. Wranglers will skate from left to right. Colorado from right to left, as you see it on NATV. I'll paint a picture for you here in YouTube as you watch it with your mind's eye. So Colorado victorious on the opening draw of the second period. Looks to get to work as Bowen Burke will blast it around towards the near side wall where DeMarco We'll jam it back down to the Colorado zone onto the tape of Merrick Thompson. Noah Grolnick with it. Gains the red line, now Wranglers blue. Grolnick to his right for Burke. Now to the left wing. West between the circles and his shot is stopped by the right pad of Peterson. Colorado keeps the puck. Is at the right point, it's Burke. Drifting in, he'll shoot. And that goes up and over the goal and stays in play. Burke gets it back, right point again. His slap shot is stopped by Peterson and the Wranglers jolt it back to Burke. He keeps it in for a moment and a second attempt by Jack Ivey gets the clear for the Wranglers. Colorado quickly re-enters. As behind the net, it's Poirier. He gets it back up to the right point for Burke. Now at the line, it's Thompson. To the left wing for Grolnick, the leading point scorer of Colorado, backhands it as the grit work it over towards the far side. In the corner, Troutwine is able to wedge the puck free to Marco the rest as the Wranglers send it down the distance for a clear. With 10 seconds remaining on the penalty to Morris. Colorado maybe one last chance. As Graves on the left wing, dances beneath the circle. He'll go around the net to Marco the defender. Wranglers try and bump Graves off the puck, but so far Colorado standing firm. Is behind the net. Miller centering. Peterson to poke check, puck bouncing between the circles, but the Wranglers are back to full strength as McNaughton skates it to center. So the Wranglers stay perfect on the penalty kill and remains a scoreless game. 
Wranglers pick the puck free. McNaughton, left circle shot is stopped by Erickson. DJ reaching from his own end, D to D for Gagnon. McNaughton gains the blue line and twists it in. He's been dangerous as of late as McNaughton has four goals and three assists in his last seven. Lucas Mann rumbling down the right wing. Gains the circle, backhand try, up and over the head of Peterson. Momentum carries it towards the near side for Topi Puikinen to scoop it up. He delays for Richie and his shot goes careening over the goal as it went up and over the head of Erickson. Richie scored his first North American Hockey League goal yesterday. As now Sheldon Rue is stopped by Peterson. Rebound goes towards the far corner. Lucas Mann with the puck. Drive it down deeper. Semenuk first man on it. It's crashing in was Braden Freifogel. It's been good action already here in the second period. A much faster pace compared to period one. It's on the left side. Shot goes wide of the goal. As it looked like that was taken by Quinn Bowden. Make that Christian Carter. The goal on the numbers. Goal on white. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. As that center ice, Luke Morris looks to get a hand on the puck. Colorado. He's able to pelt it down, and now Freifogel on the rebound. Gets it towards the slot, and Carter was defended nicely by T.J. Ritchie. As Ritchie might have just saved a goal there. Morris on the right wing, centers. Godowski tips a chop at it, and it goes off the post and stays out. Wranglers chopping at it once more. Is now in the far corner, it's Morley Phillips. What action here to start the second period. Thompson with it behind the goal. He gets tripped up by Phillips. That'll draw a penalty. And Colorado is going to head back to the power play. And so Phillips with two minutes. Tripping is the call. And so now Colorado will get another shot on the power play. And so the good thing for the Wranglers is that they've been perfect so far on the penalty kill. To this point, two for two. See if they can go three for threes. At the line, it's Thompson. Long shot, wide of the goal. Rebound goes pelting off the inboards, and the Wranglers are able to send it all the way back down to the opposite side for a clear. Thompson. As West on the left wing, he swings it towards the middle for Grolnick. His pass goes astray. Wranglers bottle him up, and they'll slide it back down to Erickson for another clear. Merrick Thompson now. Over the red line now, Wranglers blue. Along the left wing, he takes a shot off the end wall and up to the right point for Burke. Owen Burke creeps down the wall. They'll bank it corner to corner to the left wing as Grolnick handles the puck. He slides it down low. Return pass to Grolnick. Sees the puck go low to high. Now right wing. Birkins the circle and he takes a shot. And Peterson makes the save. Ben Ivey's able to skate it out of harm's way. He gains center red. And a backhand flip goes towards Erickson. Wranglers get another clear. 55 seconds and counting. Remaining on the Colorado power play. Poirier enters. Knifes his way towards his right. Finds Burke at the point. Colorado slides it across the line, back to Burke, shoots and scores as Bowen Burke on the power play gives Colorado the game's first goal. And so for the third straight night, it's Colorado getting the game's opening tally. Tonight, it's Bowen Burke from Poirier and Thompson. A little under five minutes into the second period. And the Wranglers look to respond. As Robertson dumps it in off the ensuing faceoff for Burke. It's his eighth goal of the season and his fifth on the power play. He leads Colorado in power play points this season. As the grit look to go right back to work. Right point, Junker feeds it towards the slot. Wranglers sweep it back to the neutral zone. Cook on the left wing, gains center red, blasts it into Wrangler territory. They jock it for it on the far wall. The Wranglers are able to lift it out to center and a little bit more 
as that'll be no icing. Rip move it D to D. Chris Graves, feeling the pressure from Grayson Gerhardt, peels back, picks his head up, rolls it out to the left wing for Cook. His pass in the middle is intercepted by Puikinen. Here comes Topi on the right wing, gets directed towards the corner. Now he'll go behind the net, strong on the puck, keeps it in the Wranglers possession as he was draped by two Colorado defenders. His left side shot by Troutwine is gobbled up by Erickson. And he makes the stop with 14.03 to go in the second. Well, Topi Puikinen is just so strong on the puck. He had two Colorado defenders draped over his shoulders and just kind of shrugs it off like, eh, no problem. And he keeps the puck in his possession and sets up that scoring chance for the Wranglers. Topi will stay out there with McNaughton and Zapp. Troutwine and Gagne on the two D-men. Wranglers win the draw as Troutwine has it. Long shot, glove saved by Erickson. That's his 21st of the afternoon. So the Wranglers have no problem Getting shots on goal, it's just the problem right now is they can't find a way to beat Jack Erickson. Draw in the far circle, but not Windsor tries to push his way towards the net. Erickson pokes it towards the far corner. Jacober, bouncing puck, is able to slap it towards Bowden on the far wall. Zap being a little pesky here, trying to get it back into the Wranglers hands, forces Colorado to turn the puck over. He's in the neutral zone, Wranglers weaken in. Will bounce it corner to corner towards the far wall. Zap enters and Colorado exits. Quinn Bowden over the center ice logo, right down the middle. Bowden looks to move towards his backhand. Beneath the left circle is bombed by McNaughton. Wrangler's trying to kick the puck away, and they're successful in doing so. Weakening has Zap on the left wing. He looks to gain some steam as he gains the blue line. He's forced to retreat back as Colorado was there. Now right wing Jacober steps in. Centering pass, nobody there. Zap has a glance off his stick out to the neutral zone. From the red line, Cook wires it back in. Troutwine gets a stick on the puck in front of the Colorado bench. Christian Carter is able to dig his way down the right wing. He'll go around the net on his backhand. Pops out on the near side, now on the high slot. He'll leave it for Junker. In open space, Braden Junker with a shot and a nice defensive stick by Topi Puikinen. Make sure the puck never saw Peterson. It goes out of play with 12.41 to go in the second period. In a game where Colorado has taken a 1-0 lead thanks to Bowen Burke's eighth goal of the season. Matt Burke is the only skater on the Colorado roster to have played in all 60 games this season. Puikinen is one of three for the Wranglers, one of three Ironmen who has appeared in all 60 games, the other being McDonald and McNaughton. Another shot by Junker, pad saved by Peterson. Colorado keeping the puck as Carter goes low to high. At the line, he turns and shoots, deflection out in front, and they score. Looks like it's going to go to Braden Freifogel. As Colorado has taken a 2-0 lead. Christian Carter gets the lone assist. As he took the initial shot, Braden Freivogel between the circles is able to direct the puck behind Peterson. And now Colorado, for the third straight game, has scored the first two goals. Wranglers have some work to do. Is that center ice? Jack Ivey handles it. Turns it over as he's kind of boxed out by his own man and Ben Ivey. Luckily, Ben's able to poke the puck back. As the Wranglers re-enter on the left wing, Ben Ivey skate to stick. And his pocket is picked by George Poirier and slammed back out to the right wing. Now coming in is Grolnick. He'll shoot and a save made by Peterson as Grolnick was charging down the right wing. And Peterson makes the stop with 11.56 to go in the second period in what is now a 2-0 game. I'll step aside for a minute on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube.
Colorado is a 2-0 lead thanks to goals from Burke and Freifogel. And for back to live action here at the Budweiser bullpen. Wranglers with the puck in their own end. Gagnon behind his own net, right down the middle. Moves it towards his right for Jack McDonald. On the opposite side, it's Jack Ivey. And Colorado stiffs out the Wranglers' attempt and forces the puck back out to center ice. Gerhardt directs it in. Junker picks it up behind his own net. Gets it to the right point where it's held in by Gagnon. Right circle, tip by Gerhardt, goes over the goal. And Colorado able to roll out to center once more. In the neutral zone, it's Cole Robertson. On the left wing, finds a trailer in Jack Ivey. Left side shot, defensive stick by Graves gets in the way. Cook with it behind his own cage. Moves toward the far wall where Graves will pelt it to the neutral zone. Wranglers get possession back with 10.49 to go in the second period. Wranglers out shooting the grit 21 to 19, but it's Colorado who has a two nothing lead. Thompson, turnover at his own blue line. It's Abram on the right wing, delayed off sign on the Wranglers so they can't capitalize on it. Jacober finds a man in the middle for Bowden, returns it to Jacober who is driving towards the net, and Semenyuk makes a good defensive play to poke this puck off of his stick. From center, Bowen Burke will wire it back down towards Peterson. Wrangler's able to guide the puck to the neutral zone where Robertson will knock it beneath the Colorado blue goal line. Wrangler's got a steal at the right point. Zap, left side, toe drag, shot. And it goes off a stick and out of play. Merrick Thompson was in the right place at the right time. He'll head off as Colorado gets a wholesale change. On the far circle of the Colorado zone, Grit victorious. Wranglers able to keep it in at the left point. Sebastian Mitro feels the force of a Grit skater. Colorado is able to exit. Left side, Cook a shot. Goes off a stick. Wranglers sweep it towards the near corner. DeMarco looks to get it out. Freifogel keeps it in. Dancing at the half wall. He backhands it behind Peterson for Carter. Carter leaves it for Mann. Now man behind the net for Freifogel. He's bodied off nicely by DeMarco, but Carter keeps the puck in the grit's possession. In the far corner, Carter drops it off for Man. He'll flip the script and send it towards the near side wall for Cook. He was sparring with Puikinen. Wranglers looking to dig the puck away from the boards, and they do, as Topi Puikinen will feed it towards his right for McNaughton. McNaughton will feather it back down beneath the goal line. Wranglers get a partial change behind the scenes as four checking is Zap. Out the half wall, McNaughton. Low to high. Troutwine D to D. As Gagnon back to Troutwine. Left point. Shot. Save made by Erickson. Fans take up a let's go Wranglers chant. Trying to get their team back in it. Luke Morris now will take the draw with Phillips and Gadowski has his wingers. Trotwine and Gagnon stay on. Jacober wins the faceoff in his own zone. Colorado able to catapult the puck back out to the neutral zone. George Poirier with the puck now, turns up ice. He gains Wrangler's blue, darts towards his right on his forehand, slips it towards the middle, and Peterson makes a stick save. Wrangler's on the rebound. Move up ice. Gadowski enters, stops the half wall. Now on his forehand, he'll swoop it down to Phillips beneath the goal line. He's jockeying with two grit skaters. Gadowski helps out. Wranglers keep possession. As Phillips back behind the net, turns to his forehand. Centering drive for Morris. And Erickson makes the stop. Now Colorado able to clear once more, but good zone time for the Wranglers as Troutwine will fire it back in at the right point. Phillips drops it off for a trailer in Morris, and his shot goes over the goal. 
McDonald in the slot for Morris. Can't get a shot away as Morris trying to get it back, but Colorado is able to jolt the puck back out to the neutral zone. Here's Morris again, left wing, delays and shoots. Glove save Erickson. Goes in and out and onto the tape of Gagnon. Right wing shot off a stick at the top of the blue paint, and Erickson's able to locate it with his glove as he pounces on the puck with 7.36 to go in the second period. Some good chances for the Wranglers on that last sequence. But again, the story of the weekend, Jack Erickson playing some of his best hockey of the season. Draw on the far circle of the Wrangler, of the grit zone, excuse me. First line of Jack McDonald, Ben Ivey, and Jack Ivey out there with DeMar with excuse me, Kruklidis and Semenyuk. As McDonald will take this face off, and he wins it. Ben Ivey at the half wall, fires it towards the blue paint, and goes in and out the other side. Now on the left wing, Peyton Miller. Cuts towards the middle, tries to rip a shot off. Wranglers able to box him out. Miller gets the puck back, driving towards the goal. And a kick saved by Peterson. He's able to deny the hard work of Peyton Miller. As Peterson is able to handle the rebound and stop time with 7.19 left in the second. Graves against Ben Ivey. In the far circle of the Wranglers zone. Puck gets caught up in some skates. Graves is, is able to peel it free. He'll turn and shoot. And a save is made by Peterson. And again, we get a stoppage, this time with 7-11 to go in the second period. Draw on the far circle to the left of Peterson. Graves, centering pass. Cook's shot goes wide of the goal. Colorado re-enters down the middle. Miller, long shot, in and out of the glove of Peterson. Semenyuk is there to safely corral the rebound. Kuklidis on the right wing to the neutral zone. Jack Ivey gets it to McDonald, who gets upended at the Colorado blue line. It's a big hit there, might have been a little high, and that is going to draw a penalty. He's now behind the play, Ben Ivey taking offense for what Peyton Miller just did to Jack McDonald. Looked like that hit, if it wasn't shoulder contact, it was somewhere around that area. So now Peyton Miller goes to the box. And the Wranglers go to the power play for the second time tonight. I'm not sure McDonald saw the impact coming his way. And it looks like Ben Ivey's in the box as well. So maybe the Wranglers won't go to the power play. We'll await what the official word is. We do know that the draw will be in the Colorado zone. Wranglers with five skaters out there. Grit with four, so it looks like the Wranglers are going to the power play. But they're going to have to do it without Ben Ivey. So it looks like Wranglers are sending out the second unit to begin the power play. McNaughton will take the draw against Rolnick as Ben gets two for roughing. And Grunlick gets two separate penalties, one for interference and one for roughing. That's why the Wranglers are on the power play. So Troutwine at the right point. Moves it to the left side to Marco. A missile towards the goal. And Erickson fights it aside. Colorado trying to get it out. Morris keeps it in. It's gloved down by McNaughton. Knifes his way to the slot. Topi on his backhand. Can't get the shot off. Morris will. And Erickson is able to make another stop and deny the Wranglers their first of the game. Well, Jack Erickson... Has been pretty good for Colorado this weekend. He's been sharp today as well. Couple big saves there. 
And the Wranglers are still held off the board. 21 seconds gone off the power play. Same unit stays out there. Bouncing puck off the face off. Colorado is able to clear to the neutral zone. Nick Troutwine. In open space. We'll drop it back to DeMarco. We'll move behind his own net. Look for an avenue to break out. Troutwine on the left wing. Gains center red. He'll send it diagonally towards the near corner. Morris racing after it, can't get there in time as Colorado was able to swap it back down towards Peterson. And the Wrangler netminder will get a glove on it. And we have a whistle with 5.46 to go in the second period. 109 left on the penalty to Miller. As it looks like the draw is going to be in the Wrangler's zone. Didn't look like Peterson had enough of that puck for a long enough time to really warrant that whistle. But either way, Wranglers win the defensive zone draw. They'll restart. As Jack Ivey draws a penalty, as Lucas Mann was closing in on him, if your Wranglers just let the grit touch the puck, and they do, as Jack Ivey was getting mobbed by a very aggressive Colorado forecheck shorthanded. And so now the Wranglers, with 57 seconds left on the Miller penalty, will have a five-on-three power play to work with. As it's high-sticking the call to Lucas Mann. And so a golden opportunity for the boys in blue to get their first of the night. Draw on the far circle to the right of Erickson. West take the draw, he's out there with Burke and Thompson. Wranglers five are Zapp, Jack Ivey, Gerhard, McDonald and Gagnon. Ben Ivey still in the box as Gagnon moves it towards his right for Jack Ivey. Center point, Gagnon slowly at the top of the right circle. It's a down low for Gerhard, he'll return it to Gagnon. Now in the middle is Zapp, an open space, he shoots! Save made Erickson, Wranglers trying to stuff it in! And Erickson makes another stop to keep it out of the Colorado net. The difference so far today has been Jack Erickson. Wranglers have gotten some good opportunities on the Colorado netminder here in the second period, but he has held firm. Same unit stays out there. Looks like Gerhardt has taken the place of Ben Ivey on the power play as Ben is still in the box for the next 41 seconds. He'll come out when Miller comes out. Zap to take the draw against Grolnick on the near circle. Wranglers win the draw, but Colorado is able to pick the puck free and slide it down for a clear. Five on three, now down to 30 seconds. Jack Ivey through the neutral zone, passes it towards his left for Gerhardt. Along the wall, Colorado again able to wedge the puck free and get a clear. Wranglers re-enter on the right wing. It's McDonald. Nice move towards the middle. Has a man in zap. Left wing. Throws it towards the slot. It's broken up. Wranglers keep the puck. As Gagnon has it at the line, towards the middle. McDonald for Jack Ivey in the slot. And a save is made by Poirier on the block. Five on three is over. McDonald beneath the left circle. Tries to twist it towards the middle. And Colorado is able to sniff that out as well. Although the net has come off behind the play. That draws a whistle with 4.30 left in the second. 57 seconds on the penalty to Lucas Mann. But the good news for the Wranglers is that Ben Ivey is out. So his services are now available. Looks like he's going to head to the bench. So now your five are Morris, McNaughton, Puikinen, Troutwine, and DeMarco. As the Wranglers try and drive towards the net, Puikinen trying to get a grasp on the puck. But Colorado is able to catapult it back out towards the neutral zone. Marco is bodied up on the near side boards. Wranglers skate the puck away from the pile up. His left wing trout wine has the trailer. Big gotten to the right, and Puikinen just couldn't rip a shot away. It was just too far out in front of him. He'll feed trout wine. Left point. A blast! Score! 
Nick Trawine on the power play gets the Wranglers on the board. It's two to one. And the Wranglers are right back in it. A power play tally from Nick Troutwine, his second in a Wrangler uniform, gets Amarillo on the board. With 4.04 left in the second period. Topi Puikinen gets the lone assist. And now it's just a one goal game. All goals in the contest have come in the second period. Wranglers looking to add another before the period ends. Troutwine blasted in as he gets his second goal of the season. Both of his goals have come with the Wranglers as he started the year with the Minnesota Wilderness. Troutwine behind his own net. Picks up the puck, Colorado aggressive on the four check. But Luke Morris is able to skate in out of danger. He gets high sticked, out of, he exits his own end. And now Colorado takes another penalty. Wranglers are going back to the power play. And so now the Wranglers, who have gone one for three on the man advantage so far. It looks like Morris is definitely bleeding. And so that should draw four minutes. I mean, I'm no official, but I can see it from here. High sticking to Lucas Mann for the second time today. And it is four minutes. So the Wranglers. Back on the power play, looking to tie the game and maybe a little bit more. Four minute double minor to Lucas Mann. Puts the Wranglers back on the man advantage. They're one for three so far this afternoon. Zap will take the draw, but Ivy to his left. McDonald, Jack Ivy off the draw. He snaps the shot, and Erickson makes a glove save. As all of a sudden, in a sudden of turn of events, it's the Wranglers who have all the momentum off the Troutwine goal, and now a power play as Jack Ivey, another try off the draw, goes wide. Pinching down on the right wing is Gagnon, but he is stripped of the puck in Colorado. We'll get a clear. Jack Ivey through center, loses grasp on the puck, but luckily, Gagnon is able to keep it in the Wranglers' possession. McDonald will lock the line. To the left side for Jack Ivey. He'll peel at the half wall. And was looking for support, but nobody was there as he was getting pressured by Braden Junker. Wranglers will have to regroup. It's Jack Ivey now finding Zap in motion. He gains the blue line. Zap toe drag shot. Junker's able to block it and direct it towards the near corner. And now Colorado will get another clear. They'll take this opportunity to get a change. Wranglers will get a partial one. As Gagnon, after a minute, has gone off the double minor to man, will start the next charge. Second unit has come on, and now Gagnon goes to the bench to complete the full change. Troutwine, the most recent goal scorer, comes off the bench. He's on the right wing. McNaughton finds a trailer of Morris to the middle. McNaughton, a tip, and it goes wide. Good chance there, Wranglers aren't done yet, as McNaughton has it in the far corner. Looks to find Troutwine on the wing. Puck goes bouncing to Morris, the centering attempt is blocked, and the Grit get another clear. Under two minutes to go in the second. Nick Troutwine on the left wing. Has DeMarco in the middle, he'll plug it towards his right for Morris. Luke Morris at the right point, drifting in, shoots, it's blocked, and Poirier gets it out, and now that springs Noah Grolnick at the motion, short-handed, Grolnick to the middle looking for Poirier, a nice defensive stick by Troutwine breaks it up. Left wing, Ben Ivey sees the puck glance off his stick and out of play. With 1.29 to go in the second period, 
Remaining on the penalty to man. So the first part of the double minor is over. Draw will be in front of the Wranglers bench. And Zapp will lean in to take it against Poirier. Zapp wins the draw. Gagnon has it. He'll play it over to Zapp. And he'll turn up ice. He gets Gagnon right wing. Over the line, McDonald returns it to Gagnon. To the middle, Zapp is there reaching out for it. And Erickson is able to poke check the puck away. And the Grit do the rest and get another clear. Now Jack Ivey with it. Drops it back at his own blue line. Ringlers move to the left wing. Now back across to Ben Ivey on the near side. Looking for a reaching out. Jack Ivey pass was just a bit offline. And the puck moves into the far corner. Ritter able to squeeze it free and get another clear in the final minute of the second period. Ringlers trying to move quickly here. McDonald rumbles down the right wing. Pitches it across to Ben Ivey. From the point, drops it down below the goal line for McDonald. Now back up to the left point, Trout winds there. To McDonald on the far half wall. McDonald finds a man open at the right point into Marco. He turns and shoots, flips it towards the goal, and it's sticked out of the air by Ben Ivey. It is played with a high stick, but Colorado touches it up to get it clear. And that coming with 10 seconds to go in the second. Maybe one last chance for the Wranglers in the period. Long pass on the money for Puikinen. But Luke Morris, who was trying to stretch his skate across to stay offside, onside that is, is called for offside with three seconds to go in the second. So good idea from the Wranglers. DeMarco for Puikinen, but unfortunately the offside puts a pin in it. And so now we have a neutral zone draw on the near side of the Colorado blue line. Draws on by the Wranglers, and time expires on the second period. And so that sets the stage for an exciting third period here at the Budweiser bullpen in the regular season finale, as after two periods of play, it's Colorado two and Amarillo one. Wranglers will have 27 seconds of power play time to start the second period, as they look to tie it up and mount the two goal comeback. We'll talk about all the events through the first two periods of play when we return in two minutes on the Wranglers Hockey Network for the first, inter excuse me, the second intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages. This has been the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube.
Welcome back to the Budweiser bullpen into the second intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages where it is the Colorado Grit leading the Amarillo Wranglers by the score of 2-1 to one. here from the Texas Panhandle. It's been a pretty good game so far. Largely uneventful first period was followed up by a pretty eventful second period. So let's talk about it as we get to our game recap to this point. As there was no scoring in the first period. All goals coming in the second as... It was Braden Freifogel to make that Broen Burke opening the scoring. Uh, looks like four minutes and 47 seconds into the first, excuse me, into the second period. As Burke on the power play cashes in for the game's opening score. And then about three minutes later, with 12.30 left on the clock in the, in the second, it was Braden Freifogel directing a Christian Carter shot behind Andrew Peterson to make it a 2 0 game for Colorado. And that was one of those plays where Carter, strong on the puck, kept it on his stick despite the Wranglers' efforts to break it off of his possession. And he kind of worked his way up to the right point, whipped a shot towards the slot from a high pace. He just wasn't able to react in time. But good news for the Wranglers. They've had their fair share of power play chances, and they were able to cash in on one of them so far as Nick Troutwein blasts a shot from the left point, kind of similar to what we saw from TJ Ritchie yesterday where Wranglers just move the puck from low to high. Troutwine is there at the left point, and he says, hey, you know what, why not? Let's, <laughs> let's go for it, let's take a shot. And the shot is true. It beats Jack Erickson for the Wranglers' first goal of the game, and that comes with 4.04 remaining in the second period. Now the Wranglers do have 27 seconds of power play time to work with uh, at the top of the second period. Now to this point, Amarillo has gone one for four on the power play, but uh, that is not counting the, I mean, that's still counting the power play that's in progress, so the Ringers still have a chance to change that. And so, so far, uh, in the special teams battle, it's about even, as Colorado has scored a goal on the power play, the Wranglers as well. As we saw, our fair share of penalties here so far, as both teams having a combined seven, a combined there has have been seven man advantage opportunities. More recently, it seems like they have been in the Wranglers' favor as Lucas Mann still in the box for high sticking. So uh, you got to think if you know, special teams can play a factor here in the third period. The good news for the Wranglers is that while special teams really haven't gone their way this weekend, aside from Friday where Ben Ivey scored the power play goal, uh, today their penalty kill has proven that they can get the job done when needed. And uh, the Wranglers in the season series have done a really good job of scoring against Colorado. Their power play is operated above 30% against the grit in the season series. So uh, it's going to be a wild ride to the finish here in the third period in what is the season finale here at the Budweiser bullpen. Wranglers know where they will be headed next week as they will be going to Outpost Ice Arenas to take on the New Mexico Ice Wolves in the first edition of the Robertson Cup play-in. Now here's the schedule. as it'll, be, it'll start on Friday. Game one is set for April 12th at 7.30 p.m. Mountain, or excuse me, Central Time, 6.30 Mountain, as that game will be take place in Albuquerque, which is set in the Mountain Time Zone. Game two is set for Saturday, April 13th, at 7.30 Central Time. And then game three, if necessary, is set for Sunday afternoon on April the 14th at 3 o'clock Central Time. So that is the road ahead for the Wranglers as the regular season is set to come to a close this afternoon. And for the Wranglers, in the first period, I think that the Wranglers did some good things offensively. They were much better def defensively today compared to uh, what they did on Friday and Saturday. And I think in the first period, it was kind of slogged down by a lot of whistles. There was a lot of stoppages. And I think in turn, it made it kind of difficult for the Wranglers to get some momentum going kind of start some of their breakouts, start some things that they wanted to do. And so the flow of the game really wasn't in either team's favor, although the Wranglers did not shoot the grip. And the Wranglers in the second period, though, able to get a goal on the board. And I think that's really important for the Wranglers that they didn't come up, come up empty-handed through the first two periods of play. Now it is just a one-goal game, and so Colorado does have the lead after two periods of play. And leading after two, Colorado is eight and two. Now keep in mind, those two losses, both came at the hands of the Wranglers. 
The Wranglers went trailing after two periods. Have a record of 6-16, 4-1. So we'll see what the Wranglers have in store for us here in the third period. We do know that it's going to come right down to the very end. And we, do, we, we can assume that there's going to be a lot of shots in the third period. As combined, both teams have taken 55 shots through 40 minutes of play. Wranglers are out shooting the grit 31 to 24. And so Amarillo has done a really good job of out shooting Colorado in this we this weekend set. Done a good job of putting shots on goal here today. Andrew Peterson has looked great for the Wranglers, stopping 22 of 24. Erickson has been, been phenomenal for Colorado uh, today as he has been all weekend, stopping 30 of 31. Now one note is that Colorado Without Jordan Goodridge and Will Hadrick today, Goodridge out due to due to a suspension. Colorado is only playing 4D today, and as time wears on, as the Wranglers continue to press offensively, I think we're going to see the, a lot of fatigue creep in for Colorado, who is playing with a lot of hunger, a lot of drive to end their season, which to this point has already almost has all only produced uh, 12 wins through 59 games. We're going to get uh, some fatigue going here in the third period. They have been playing hungry, but my question is how long will that last? How long is that sustainable? And so if they're the Wranglers, I think you have to make a note to just get pucks in deep, kind of just work things around, even win those puck battles along the boards, just kind of try and grind and wear Colorado down and just tire out that defense. We've seen a lot of Bowen Burke. We've seen a lot of... The Colorado defense here today. We've seen a lot of Merrick Thompson. Hunter Cook has logged a lot of minutes. And so you have to wonder at some point here in the third period, uh, does it all kind of just collapse in on the grit? If the Wranglers score once here in this third period, I wouldn't put it past them to score another one very quickly shortly afterwards. As once the Wranglers start to get some steam, it's been proven that they're pretty tough to stop. And so we'll see what the third period holds. We'll talk about it. A little bit more when we come back on the second intermission report brought to you by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages as Colorado has a 2-1 lead over the Wranglers.
Welcome back to the Budweiser Bullpen. Second half of the second intermission report presented by Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages. I'm Guy Carenza. The score, Colorado, and, <coughs> excuse me, trying to think about it. B between the break, I think this is a, I mean, while, while you don't want to be down in this moment, right, to Colorado, I do think that, 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 that this is a good kind of simulation, if you will, for the Wranglers heading into the Robertson Cup play-in. I mean, what this does for you right now is it kind of simulates what we're experiencing right now. But I guess what I'm trying to get at is it's trying it's it's a situation where the Wranglers kind of have a chance to kind of play around with the scenario of being down like this in a game and needing to come back and find a way to victory. They're going to try and do it today against the Colorado Grip, but something tells me about that series against the New Mexico Ice Wolves. Knowing the Ice Wolves and the way that that season series went, it was only a four-game season series, so not a, 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 lot, a lot of games in that season series. But from what I remember, in, in those games, it was kind of a race to three. And so in a game like this, two-to-one score entering the third period, I think this one might be a race to three. And so if the Wranglers can, be, can find a way to kind of get past this test here this afternoon. I think they're in good shape heading into the Robertson Cup playoffs. And so we'll see who's the hero in the third period for the Wranglers if they are able to come back. I think the easy pick is you look at Jack Ivey who has got 31 goals on the season. Uh, the second most in a single season in Wrangler history. It's not a bad pick as Jack did take a team leading eight shots on goal in yesterday's loss. And I do believe that is a season high for him. He does lead the team in shots overall. So you watch out for Jack Ivey. Watch out for that entire line he's on as well. Ben Ivey, Jack McDonald. And Jack Ivey and Jack McDonald have kind of terrorized the grip throughout the course of the season series as unfortunately their streak of scoring a point in every single game against Colorado ended yesterday as neither registered a point in the four to two loss. But... I mean, they've proven this season that they're dominant against Colorado. Jack, 11 goals, 8 assists in 11 games against Colorado. Jack McDonald, 9 goals, 11 assists in 11 games versus Colorado. These guys are clutch. So uh, in a situation like this, and like I said, kind of a simulation of a playoff game, if you will, where you've got two hungry teams going at it looking for the win. Uh, you need your big guns to step up. You need your stars to step up. So you look at the first line. You look at Weakening with McNaughton and Zap. McNaughton playing some of his best hockey. Those are some names to watch out for. As the puck is dropped on third period action, Wrangler's still on the tail end of a power play. Have a chance to make it a 2-2 game. But it looks like time is set to expire on that soon as Colorado gets another clear from their own end. Troutwine picks it up. He'll rotate behind Peterson towards the far side. DeMarco sidesteps the oncoming pressure, and that is the end of the Wrangler power play. So now they are one for four as Morris enters on the right wing. And then he'll draw a whistle 33 seconds into the third as the Wranglers are offside. And so while the Wranglers and Grit both technically don't have anything to play for, as the Wranglers know where they will be next week in the Grit 2 as well. It's an interesting test for the Wranglers as they gear up for a deep playoff run. Colorado whacks it around towards the far side boards. Left point shot, Thompson goes wide of the mark. Now on the right wing, Burke takes a try. and It goes off a stick and onto the tape of Ben Ivey. As he will peel back, move towards his right, and dump the puck down into the Colorado end. Burke. Tries to jar it out of the zone. It's kicked back in by Mitro. Where now Colorado will get it out and ice the puck. Well, maybe no, because Gronlick wins the race. Good hustle by Noah Gronlick as he loses the puck as he lost an edge. McDonald collides with the man and Junker at the blue line. Wranglers keep the puck as the pass towards the middle. It was off a leg and towards the far side wall. Brian Fogel tries to bat the puck out of the air like a baseball player. He swings and misses, but his teammates get the job done as Colorado goes back in the attacking end. Not for long, though. 
The Wrangler's able to jolt the puck back out the center ice. Carter calling for it on the left wing. He's got it. Feeds a man in Freifogel. Bouncing puck. Wranglers are able to knock it back out to the neutral zone where Cook will pump it back in. It's going to be interesting to see how the Wranglers approach this third period. Down by only one. See if they stick to their game or if they show signs of desperation early on. So far, it looks like they're calm, cool, and collected. And it's Puikinen in the far corner. From low to high, DeMarco swings it towards the left point for Kruklidis. A whip a shot towards the goal. Erickson the save. Puck was loose, but they blew the whistle. And so we stop with 17.47 remaining in the third period. Martin Kruklidis still looking for his first goal on the season. So is Elias Abram. As today's the final game of the regular season. So we'll see if one of those two guys can pick up their first goal of the season. TJ Ritchie got his yesterday. As Peyton Miller dives into the Wranglers zone, curls at the right circle, looks for support. Wranglers are able to bottle him up and get the puck away. Now Barton's Kruklidis on the left wing, long pass. He's looking for Abrant. It boomerangs back to the Latvian. They'll move it towards the Michigan man and Kyle DeMarco. And he will fling it into the Colorado zone. Gerhard in hot pursuit as Chris Graves gathers the puck and charges down the right wing. Abrant on the forecheck almost forces a turnover. But Colorado stays strong on the puck. And now they enter on the right wing. Sheldon Rue, who has two goals this season in his young career, will backhand it beneath the goal line. Nolan Gagnon will gather it. And Colorado behind the scenes will get a partial change. Meanwhile, Grayson Gerhard finds Abrant in the neutral zone. He wanted to dump it in, goes off the skate of the official, and now goes tumbling into the, knee cor into the near corner. Colorado able to wedge it away. Gagnon pinching, keeps the puck in, tries to whip it towards the slot, hits a defensive stick, and Colorado will possess as they look to start their next breakout. In the neutral zone, Shin will direct it towards the right wing. Bowden will gather it at the half wall, dart away from the pressure of Phillips, and have to scamper back to the neutral zone where he turns it over. Re regain possession. And now Wilder to Cobra. Feathers it towards the middle. Phillips is able to sniff it out. Drop pass. Morris right side. Shot pad save Erickson. And the rebound goes out to center. Quinn Bowden delays for Shin. He looks to return it to Bowden. The pass is broken up nicely by the Wranglers and in transition. And they come again. Right wing Phillips blocker save by Erickson. And Grit are able to clear once again. Duncan Chin gets a steal. He goes right down the middle, driving towards the net. Peterson a poke check. And TJ Ritchie doing the rest. Get the Wranglers out the center. As Ben Ivey finds McDonald. Phillips staying out there. McDonald loses the puck to Landon West. And now Noah Grolnick will rumble down the left wing. Wranglers are able to box him away from the puck. As Kruklidis banks it off the near side wall to McDonald at center ice. Puck will come back to the Latvian. And the Wranglers have to get a grasp on it as McDonald is high sticked in the neutral zone. That calls for a penalty. And the Wranglers are going back to the power play. McDonald goes to the bench. Looks like he will receive some medical attention from being high stick. Looks like, he, looks like he will be okay, though. Meanwhile, Wranglers will get the, their fifth power play chance today. As in the box is George Poirier. High sticking is the call, just two minutes. So we talked about special teams in the second intermission. Now they could play pivotal in who wins this game. Wranglers with a chance now. Is that the left point? It's Jack Ivey. He backhands it down deep behind the cage for Ben Ivey. On his forehand, works it back up top for Jack Ivey. They'll gain the left circle. Stop, get it back up to Ben on the left point. Ben Ivey on his forehand, creeping down the wall. Wranglers being patient. He turns it to Jack, center point. Gagnon 
Whips the shot towards the goal, deflection out in front. Phillip is there. And Phillips, that is, and Erickson is able to make the stop as Morley Phillips was trying to direct the puck by Erickson at the top of the blue paint. But the Colorado netminder is able to make the save. Still 123 remaining on the penalty to Poirier with 1437 left in the third. Draw on the far circle. Zapp will take it against Christian Carter. Carter had an assist on the Freifogel goal. It is in deep. Wranglers go low to high. Gun on from the point. Gets it to the half wall for Zapp. Now down low, Ben Ivey, stuff attempt. And Erickson leaping is able to make the save. And the Grid are able to escape any more danger. Now shorthanded, it's Freifogel. He pelts a shot off the end wall. Goes to Phillips. Wranglers move in transition. It's Jack Ivey. Stomps at the line. Delays to Ben Ivey on the right wing. He holds up, sees some pressure coming. Gets it to the point for Gagnon. Now to the left side for Jack Ivey. Tries to move it beneath the circle for Phillips. He'll jolt it towards the far corner. Now Zap has it at the half wall. His centering feed goes in and out the other side. Colorado able to twist the puck back down to the Wrangler end for a clear. Good shift there for the Wranglers on the power play, but they still come up empty-handed. Now here's Kyle DeMarco. He finds McNaughton in the neutral zone. Now Troutwine will whip it around. He has the lone Wrangler goal here this afternoon. At the right point, DeMarco settles the puck down. To the corner for Puikinen. Puck comes out of the pile to McNaughton. He's able to chip it back to the corner for Puikinen. Now up to the right point is DeMarco. Across is Troutwine. Fakes a shot, looks to move it down low for Morris. Bouncing puck, McNaughton grasps it. Back up to the left point, Troutwine has it. We're back to even strength. As Morris is back in behind the net. Puck is jumping around, Colorado able to settle it down. Wheel it out to the neutral zone. McNaughton to the right wing for Morris. One touch pass to Puikinen. Toe drag shot, glove saved by Erickson, but it stays in play. Left side, Troutman a try, and that is blocked. Colorado will skate it through center. As Sheldon Rue goes right down the middle. He gets bodied off the puck nicely by Kyle DeMarco. That's a veteran play as the Wranglers get possession back. Wranglers scoot it out the center ice. Boomerangs back to McNaughton. Wranglers defense holding steady as DeMarco rainbows it to the center ice logo. It plops down to Wilder to Cobra. He spurs down the right wing, plays it towards the middle for Bowden. Backhand try. Peterson the glove save. And it remains a 2-1 game. Afterwards, we've got a cluster up on the far corner of the Wrangler's zone, but not for long. They break that up in timely fashion. As the clock is stopped with 12.21 to go in the third period. Draw on the near circle. Jacober against Gerhard. The Gerhard line is out there. Mitro, one of the two D-men. He's able to pelt it towards the near side point. A little help from Gerhard. The Wranglers get it back out to center. Grit will drop it back in. Money bounce off a corner. Goes by Peterson. I like what we saw yesterday on Graves' goal. As Gerhard enters on the left wing, he whips a shot towards the goal. Sneaky shot there, but Erickson's up to the task again. Now in the right corner, up to the point for seven yuck. Abrant whips it towards the goal, and it goes wide of Erickson. Rolnick on the far wall. Bulldozes his way to the neutral zone. And now he will just return it to the Wrangler defense as Colorado looks to get a line change. Left wing Gerhard gains the circle. His shot is blocked by Poirier. Puck goes corner to corner. Is on the far side. Freifogel feeling the force of Morley Phillips. Just looks to get the puck out. Lucas Mann helping as the puck does escape the zone. Wranglers will settle it down at center. Godowski on the right wing. Scored his first goal with a Wrangler on Friday. Centering pass nicely broken up by Freifogel. Now on the right half wall, it's gone on. Has a trailer in Ritchie. He shoots, and a save is made by Erickson on TJ Ritchie. A nice shot from the left side that remains a 2-1 game. Clock is stopped with 10.59 and a go to go in the third period. It's going to be a wild ride to the finish. Stick around on the Wranglers Hockey Network 
on NATV to find out how this one ends. We'll be back in just a moment on the Wranglers Hockey Network on NATV and YouTube. We're headed down the home stretch. Just 10.59 remain in regulation of the regular season. Wranglers are down by one. It's Colorado that leads two to one. Can the Wranglers do what they've done all season long and find a way to claw back to victory? We're about to find out as Luke Morris will take the draw in the near circle of the Colorado zone. Bouncing puck. Luke looks to gather it. He's jockeying against two grit skaters, but he's somehow able to keep the puck in the zone. Wranglers drop it down deep as Morley Phillips gives chase. Gadowski there as well, but Colorado is able to slip free from the pressure and get the puck back out to the red one where Lucas Mann will dump it in. Wranglers in a timely fashion, able to roll out to center ice as Luke Morris will play it back to TJ Ritchie. Aggressive forecheck here from Lucas Mann, number 18 in white. Colorado. On the right wing, gets bottled up at the blue line. Puck comes back to Bowen Burke. The Grit are forced to restart. They'll have to do it from their own end as they are called for icing with 10.13 to go in the third period. The pass was just out of the reach. As the Grit were trying to knock it into the Wranglers zone. And so this gives the Wranglers an offensive zone draw as the first line comes out. Ben Ivey with Jack McDonald and Jack Ivey. Watch for Jack Ivey. He's a righty shot. He's stationed right behind Ben Ivey. As Ben wins the draw, powers it towards the right corner. On his forehand, finds Jack Ivey. Quick shot. Wide left. And the grit are able to clear. And in the process, get a partial change. Wranglers plug the puck back in. Colorado returns the favor by clearing to the neutral zone. Buklidis will wind it around towards the far half wall. Miller gets a grasp on it. Puck comes right to Jack Ivey, but he can't rip a shot away. Good defense there by Bowen Burke. Now Sebastian Mitro feeling the force of Peyton Miller. Evades the forecheck. Gets it to Kruklidis. Now Jack Ivey scampers through the neutral zone. Right down the middle. He shoots! And a save made by Erickson. Rebound! Score! Jack Ivey ties it at two, and it's a brand new game. Well, for a moment, it looked like Erickson was going to get the whistle. I thought he had the puck, but Jack Ivey, he played until he heard a whistle, and he didn't hear one. He gets his 32nd goal of the season, and that's why you play until you hear the whistle. Looks like Erickson made the save, and he just didn't get enough on it to warrant the whistle. And Jack Ivey driving towards the net, finishes the job. And we're tied at two. And so the Wranglers, they've done it again. They somehow find a way to hang around in these kind of games. And that sets the stage for an exciting finish to the regular season here at the Budweiser bullpen. Goal number 32 for Jack is the Wranglers' second of the night. And now, with the crowd fired up, we have a brand new game. It is unassisted. It's his and his alone, Jack Ivey. Has made it a tie game with under 10 minutes to go in the third. If he hit the nine minute mark left on the clock, Colorado will enter on the right wing, Graves, sharp angle shot, Peterson, a big shoulder save, and the puck just barely misses the rafters and goes out of play. And they're gonna call in a puck out of play anyway, so make that three for three on pucks on the rafters tonight after we, did it, after we didn't have any 
in the first 59 games of the regular season. Drawn to the left of Peterson. Wrangler is able to pick the puck away from the pile off the draw. Get it out to center. Roman Zappel collect it. Wrangler's forward on the left wing. Has McNaughton trailing for supports. Zapp to the middle. He was looking for Pawikinen. But the pass evaded the finish forward. But stays in the zone. His right point. Gagnon fires towards the goal. And a glove save by Erickson stops time with 8.33 to go in regulation. I mean, just to reiterate how good the Wranglers have been in one or two goal games this season, Amarillo is 21-8-5-2 in games decided by one or two goals. In fact, Wranglers are excellent when it comes to winning one goal games. They are 17-2-6-2 in one goal affairs. So you got to think that this situation favors Amarillo. Colorado, in stark contrast, hasn't really had their way in games that are decided by one goal. And it's from the neutral zone. Thompson will just dump it into the Wranglers zone. A young Colorado team will see how they respond in their final test of the regular season. Colorado is 6-10, 3-2 in one goal games. As here comes Cole Robertson. Tries to backhand a pass towards the middle. Nice defensive play by Freifogel. Robertson gets it back. He cuts towards the net. And again, the grit were able to box him out. Good shift from Cole Robertson as he stays out. They'll pick the puck up in the neutral zone and slide it back for Semenyuk as the Wranglers look to regroup. As Grayson Gerhard gets bottled up at the Colorado blue line, bouncing puck. Colorado just tries to chop at it as Burke is able to weasel it out to the center ice logo for Poirier. He has the trailer and Carter. Wrist shot goes off a stick and out of play. I believe that was Kruklidis who made the defensive stop for Amarillo. Time stops with 7.30 remaining in the third. And so, the Wranglers now have 42 shots on the board to Colorado's 25. As the Wranglers to this point have outshot the grit 11 to one in the third period. It's been all Wranglers here in the third. As the draw is won by Colorado and now off it Morley Phillips gets a steal. He rumbles down the right wing, dump and chase. Krolnick just tries to pitch it off the far wall and out to the neutral zone. But hard work of Godowski forces Colorado to flip the script and send it towards the near side. Now an errant pass goes to DeMarco. Graves pinching, keeps it in the Wrangler's zone. Gets bodied up on the far side half wall. DeMarco comes away with the puck for a moment. Comes back into the traffic pile up. And now Colorado will have possession. Is at the right point. Burke settles it down. Flings a shot towards the goal. And it's traffic. Colorado trying to get a shot away. And the Wranglers defense again up to the task. Looks like Miller was trying to Michigan as he goes around the net. No success. Now center point, it's Graves. Fires towards the goal. Gloves save Peterson. And he stops the clock with 6.39 to go in the third. And a 2-2 tie. Again, Colorado dressing just four D-men here today. Looks like on that last shift we saw Noah Gronlick, who's normally a forward, playing in a defensive position. You have to think at this point, Colorado's defense in the final game of a three-game set. And knowing what we just mentioned, they have got to be tired. He's off the defensive zone draw. Wranglers get possession behind Peterson. Colorado quickly changes that narrative. And is on the near side. Christian Carter with it, dances towards the half wall, exchanges with Freifogel on his backhand. Freifogel will find Carter in the right circle. Wranglers trying to do everything they can to keep Colorado from getting a shot on goal, and so far, that's met with much success as the Wranglers get it out to the neutral zone. Jack Ivey will flip it into Colorado territory. He did not gain the red line, and so that will be an icing on the Wranglers with 6.06 to go in the third. And so the bad news for the Wranglers is that they can't get a line change. Colorado gets some fresh bodies on. As the draw will be to the right of Peterson on the far circle of the Wranglers zone. Ben Ivey to take it against Chris Graves. 
Make that land in West. As Ben wins the draw. Grolna keeps it in. West center point sees his shot blocked by Troutwine. And the puck goes careening out of play with 5.58 to go in the third. Make sure you stay up to date with the Wranglers and follow our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, X, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Make sure you follow the Wranglers to stay up to date with everything that we've got going on. The defensive zone draw is won by Amarillo. Troutwine helps it towards the neutral zone. Defensive stick by Grolnick. Gets in the way of a pass. It forces Troutwine to restart things deep in his own territory. Troutwine ever so strong and steady. Had the Wranglers' first goal here tonight. His second in a Wrangler uniform. Looks to go for a long pass, but instead it's offline. And the Wranglers again are called for icing. This time with 5.37 to go in the third. Draw on the far circle, McNaughton to take it against West. West to Victor, at the left point it's Thompson. To the wall, looking for West, McNaughton is there defensively. Puck battle on the far side boards. It comes to Nolan Gagnon, plays it at the top of his own blue paint for Nick Troutwine. Wranglers, a couple more quick passes, rumble down the left wing as McNaughton shoots and it goes over the goal. Momentum carries it out to the neutral zone. Now Semenyuk with it behind his own cage. Turns up ice. He's been excellent since he came over from the Corpus Christi ice race in the trade. Five points, all assists, and he's a plus five rating as well. He's been phenomenal. He's able to box a man away from the puck. Wranglers try and clear, and they are successful in doing so as Topi Puikinen gains center red and dumps it down. Wranglers look to get a line change. As Quinn Bowden Tries to dart towards the goal. Wranglers are able to sniff away the puck. As Semenyuk hits Gerhardt in the neutral zone. Gerhardt trying to charge down the right wing. The only thing standing in the way is Cook. And Brandt looking to try and help out. He gets decked down to the ground by Cook. And now on a clearing attempt, the puck hits the head official. Good thing he's wearing a helmet. We keep playing. It did come out of the zone. It's Colorado. From the regular blue line, we'll just drop it down behind Peterson. We're under five minutes to go with 4.07 left on the clock. Gerhardt dancing his way through the neutral zone. Left side shot, it's blocked. Colorado picks up the rebound. Graves on the right wing. Looking to go around Kruklidis. Pivots at the half wall. Now backhand drop towards the near corner for Miller. Wrangler step in and get the puck back as Gerhardt was there in the right place at the right time. Now in the near corner, Colorado. In open space, gets the puck, and now along the wall, they try and send it coast to coast. Wranglers get an active stick in the way. And now Cole Robertson gets a steal, and he almost was home free, but Colorado at the last second is able to bump him off the puck. On the left wing, Morley Phillips delays and shoots. Erickson the save, wonky rebound between the circles. Godowski is there, but he can't rip a shot off. Gagnon to the left point for Troutwine, and the pass was too hot to handle. And so Troutwine from the neutral zone will just wire the puck back in. A little over three minutes to go in regulation. Could be beheaded for some extra time here in the regular season finale. Colorado spatters the puck back down. Luke Morris from his own end backhands it to the blue line where it's flagged down by the glove of Graves. Wranglers will control as Troutwine finds Gagnon. Right wing attack goes glancing off the boards. Over towards the near corner of the Colorado zone where Braden Junker will wheel it over to Cook for the next Colorado chance. Ganowski on the four check, looks to pry the puck away. Wranglers are able to get a steal as Ben Ivey finds Phillips on the right wing. From the point he takes a shot, goes off a stick and down low. Behind the net, Cook collects the puck and gets it to the blue line. Leaping was Mitro to keep it in the zone. Great play there from the Slovakian. But Colorado on a second attempt, he's able to get it center circle. Sebastian Mitro up to the neutral zone. Jack Ivey collects it at the blue line on his backhand. 
Needs it for Ben Ivey. One-time shot. Erickson pad save. Puck bumbles behind the net. Wranglers look to get it to the right circle, but the pass is intercepted by Carter. And he will send it back down to the Wranglers zone, and the Grit will get a partial change. Mitro on the left wing. Hacks it off the stick of McDonald and down deep. On the near wall, Colorado flings it towards the left wing where it's gathered by Grolnick. He's directed towards the far corner by Kuklidis. Landon West steps in, turns and shoots from the right circle. Never saw Peterson, and goes towards the far boards. Grit flipped the script and sent it towards the near side corner. West passes it up, he was looking for Grolnick. It does make its way to number 21 in white as he paddles a shot towards Peterson that is stopped with 121 left in regulation. Yeah, it looked like for a moment the Wranglers had that situation under control and then next thing you know the puck takes a wonky bounce off a stick and now Grolnick had a shot on the right wing. He just whips it towards Peterson. And Peterson, like he has been all day, was sharp to make the stop. He figured this one could be a race to three. Looks like that's going to be the case. The question is, is will we need extra time? Draw on the near circle of the Wrangler zone. McNaughton to take it and win it. Kyle DeMarco will blast it out of his own ends to the Colorado blue line. Grit respond by hoisting it to the Wrangler blue line, where West will swap at it, and the Wranglers... We'll just jolt it back into the Colorado end. One minute remaining in regulation as Grolnick on the left wing snaps a shot that's blocked by DeMarco. On the end boards, there's a puck battle. Time's ripping off the clock. We're tied at two. First two belong to Colorado. Last two belong to the Wranglers. Junker meanders his way behind his own cage. Feathers it towards his right for Cook. He'll gain the red line. Now Blue, and he snaps a shot that's gloved down by Peterson with 29 seconds to go in the third. Andrew Peterson in pursuit of his fourth victory of this season. He's undefeated in the North American Hockey League. As the draw will be on the near circle of the Wranglers zone. Grayson Carhard has assigned the task against Chris Graves. Gerhard the victor. Puck goes into the corner. Wranglers able to jostle it back out towards the neutral zone. Colorado turns up ice. As here's Peyton Miller drifting towards his left. Tries to take a shot and rolled off of his stick. He's directed into the far corner by Gagnon. 12 seconds to go. Battle for it on the end boards. Abrant on the near wing. Gathers it in the neutral zone from the, the red line. Backhands it down. Three seconds to go, and we are headed to overtime in the regular season finale. And so, what a fitting ending to the Wranglers' regular season. You play an overtime game, Wranglers have had their fair share of those. In overtime, the Wranglers have a record of eight and six. And it is worth mentioning that they are three and two in the shootouts. Now when it comes to playing overtime in this building, the Wranglers have a record of four and three. The Wranglers look to pick up their 32nd win of the season. End it on a high note into the Robertson Cup playoffs next weekend against New Mexico. With the one point here today, they have 71 on the season, matching their total from last year, where they went 34, 23, 2, and 1. And ended up losing in the round, in the first round against the Oklahoma Warriors, the eventual Robertson Cup champion. As eager eyes watch on here at the Budweiser bullpen, keen to see if the Wranglers can pick up one last victory heading into the playoffs. A lot of shots on the board here today. As Wranglers put up 44 on the board. Colorado 28. Andrew Peterson has stopped 26 of 28. Erickson 42 of 44. His opening the scoring in the second period was Bowen Burke on the power play. Then about three minutes later, it was Braden Freifogel a, tipping in a Christian Carter shot. 
Wranglers responded with a goal from Nick Troutwine on the power play to make it two to one. And here in the third period, the lone, uh, in the third period, the lone goal was scored by Jack Ivey with 9.22 left on the clock. They tie the game at two apiece. And that's what you see right now. If you're watching on NATV and on YouTube, we paint a picture for you here with your mind's eye. It's going to be a wild wide ride to the finish. The Wranglers, while they have played a lot of overtime games, haven't played one in a while. The last time they did was on February 23rd against the Odessa Jackalopes, where they fell 4-3 to in overtime in this building. The trio out there for the Wranglers, Roman Zapp, Nolan Gagnon, and Topi Puikinen for Colorado. It's Noah Grolnick, George Poirier, and Bowen Burke. Get ready, because here we go. As the puck is dropped and Colorado wins the faceoff, they will get the first crack at it here in overtime. Bowen Burke motors through the neutral zone. He darts towards his left, stops at the left half wall, finds a trailer. It's Poirier. Gagnon applying the heat. Forces Poirier back into his own end as he looks to rethink things. Bowen Burke over the red line. Leaves it for Grolnick on the left wing as a trailer. Poirier to his left. Forehand shot. Peterson the save. And the Wranglers come away unscathed. The clearing attempt is successful. As in the neutral zone, it's Zap. Potential 2 1 1. Zap delays. Dipu weak and it's score! Wranglers win it 3 to 2 in overtime! The comeback complete. The regular season ends on a high note, and the Wranglers are victorious. Unbelievable! Topi Puikinen is team leading seventh game winning goal of the season. Gives the Wranglers smiles all around, heading into the Robertson Cup playoffs. Smoke them if you got them. The Wranglers, for the 32nd time this season, are victorious. And it is a record year for the Wranglers. They have improved upon their record from the previous season ever since their inception three seasons ago. They finished the campaign with 72 points. And we'll look to build upon it with a deep run in the Robertson Cup playoffs. And so the regular season comes to a close in dramatic fashion. And knowing the way the season has gone for the Wranglers, that about sums it up. <laughs> a nail biter all the way through, 45 seconds into overtime, Topi Puikinen's 25th goal of the season is the game winner. And fans head home happy, and the Wranglers Head to the locker room happy, knowing that they will end the season with a win as they travel to Albuquerque next weekend. Game one on Friday, 7.30 Central, against the New Mexico Ice Wolves in a best of three series. Wranglers postgame show starts now. Well, what, what, what can you say about this Wranglers team? There's a lot of words you can use to describe this team, but I think the one that we've said a lot this season, and it's been echoed by the coaching staff, by the players as well, resilient. It's just a resilient bunch. Down by two, the first two goals belonging to Colorado, both being scored in the second period. Bowen Burke on the power play, then Braden Freifogel about three minutes apart. Give Colorado a 2 nothing lead, and then after that, all Wranglers. Nick Troutwine gets his second goal of the season and in a Wrangler uniform. 4.04 left in the second period to make it 2-1. Weakening the lone assist there. And then in the third period, it's Jack Ivey to tie the game. 9.22 remaining in, this, in the third. Make it a 2-2 game. And then Weakening in overtime from Zap. It's a multi-point affair for Topi Puikinen. His 13th of the season from Zapp and Gagnon 
to give the Wranglers a victory here on home ice to end the regular season. Topi Pawikinen, rightfully so, with a goal and assist here today, is named the first star of the game. And he's about as clutch as they come. It's been a treat to watch him this season. The finish forward in crunch time. Gets it done for the Wranglers, his seventh game-winning goal of the season. Gives the Wranglers the victory. And so with that, the regular season comes to a close. We now turn our focus to the New Mexico Ice Wolves as the Wranglers will take them on for game one of the best of three series on Friday, April 12th at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Those games are played in the Mountain Time Zone, so make sure you know 7.30 Central, 6.30 Mountain. And then game two would be on Saturday, the 13th of April, same start time, 7.30 Central. And then game three, if necessary, is set for Sunday, April 14th at 3 p.m. Central Time. And again, we talked about it at the top of the pregame show, uh, excuse me, the postgame show. Resilient is the word for these Wranglers. They're a bunch where they won't go away. And that is going to make for an interesting show against the New Mexico Ice Wolves in the play-in. Two evenly matched teams. You look at their records this season. The Wranglers now with the victory here today. 32 wins on the season. Same as the Ice Wolves. Just ended up one point back of New Mexico. 72 to 73. New Mexico ended 32-19-6-3. The Wranglers will end 32-26-2. So uh, the difference, one point. And so that makes for one of the most exciting, if not the most exciting, matchup in the Robertson Cup play-in. And all eyes will be on the Amarillo Wranglers to see if they can improve upon their appearance last season where they were swept by the eventual champion, the Oklahoma Warriors. If anything that we saw today is an indicator of what we're going to see in Albuquerque, buckle up and get ready because it's going to be one heck of a ride. We're going to have it all for you here on NATV and YouTube on the Wranglers Hockey Network as the regular season is now over. And so now with the Ice Wolves as the opponent, and we wrap up the postgame show, let's take a quick look at the Ice Wolves, see if we can notice anything off the bat heading into the matchup as New Mexico does possess a pretty good power play, 20.1%. There was a time on New Year's Eve where that power play was second best in the North American Hockey League. Seems like it's fallen off a little bit since the last meeting between these two clubs. In fact, the last meeting was on New Year's Eve where the Wranglers defeated the Ice Wolves. The Wranglers ended up, go, ended up going 2-1-1 one one against New Mexico in that season series. And so it's going to be a lot of fun, but the glaring issue for New Mexico, while their, penalty, while their power play, it's top 10 unit, the penalty kill, 77.6%, 29th in the league. Now you look at a Wrangler power play here today that was able to cash in against a Colorado team that had one of the weaker penalty kills in the league. And so I think the big thing going into Albuquerque is going to be that matchup of special teams. Wranglers end up going one for six on the power play here today. And the power play this season has been one of the Wranglers' bread and butter things. So uh, you look at that Ice Wolves penalty kill, 29th in the league. They're going to want to shore that up against the league's third best power play. What I do remember about the New Mexico Ice Wolves is that they are like the Wranglers, a team that possesses speed, but they also do possess size and physicality. And so, kind of talked about it in the second intermission report. I'll reiterate it again here. Kind of seems like in those games, it could be much like what we saw here today where it's just kind of a race to three. And tonight here, the Wranglers won that race to three, defeating Colorado three to two. Uh, something tells me that while both teams possess uh, a high-octane offense, both New Mexico and Amarillo, 
the playoffs are a whole different animal. And so something tells me that the Wranglers, while uh, they do possess a lot of offensive pizzazz, could end up being a low-scoring affair. In a lot of cases, could be end up being a race to three. We'll see how it goes next weekend in Albuquerque. As here today, the Wranglers get the victory over Colorado in the final game of the regular season. Your final score, Wranglers th three, grit two in overtime. Topi Puikinen is the overtime hero with his 25th goal of the season. I think that's going to wrap things up here for the postgame show. Once again, we'll see you next weekend in Albuquerque on Friday night, 7.30 Central Time. We'll call it a 7.15 pregame show as we gear up for a deep playoff run for game one against New Mexico. Once again, your final score here today, the Wranglers three, the Grit two final in overtime. I'm Guy Carenza saying good afternoon and so long. We'll see you.